All right, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. We're going to uh, stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, good morning. On behalf of Commissioner Tail, Commissioner Candelaria, the County Administrator Shaq Powers, uh, we welcome you here. First thing on the agenda is the minutes. Uh, commissioners, have you had the opportunity to look at the minutes? Mm -hmm. I have, and I would move that we uh, accept the minutes for the Montezuma County uh, Board of Proceedings for May 5th, 2020 uh, hybrid meeting. Second. There's been a motion and a second to approve the Board of Montezuma County Commissioner's minutes for the day of May 5th, 2020. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Next, uh, we have the emergency manager update with Jim Spratley. Yes. Good morning, gentlemen. How are we? Good morning. Good morning. Good. Good morning. Uh, so uh, I'll go over it briefly. You have the situation assessment report uh, in a little more detail in front of you. Uh, the, the prior seven days. Uh, pretty much been locating and securing needed supplies. We're getting some more in, I believe, today. So we're uh, moving ahead with our PPE. So that's working well. Uh, we're still monitoring this new plan that's out uh, out in the public, and uh, we're keeping an eye on that. Uh, we're, we're continually building a system to identify our own special needs population. Uh, we're moving ahead with some forms that we're working on. Uh, we're adding to our uh, emergency operations center support system. Uh, we have another virtual public information officer that the state's allowing us to utilize to help us, uh, you know, go forward with this uh, this new plan that we have out there to make sure everybody's on the same page. Uh, we're continuing uh, in our long-term planning recovery piece. Uh, we're still assisting the businesses in recovery. Uh, it's a big deal. Uh, hopefully that's working out for all the business communities. Working with donations and distribution of products, uh, we're com still complying a lot of data into usable formats and some data systems. We're continuing with the contact tracing. Uh, we are beginning to uh, a development and of some plans for a temporary tier three facility, uh, just in case uh, we have any kind of an outbreak and then uh, we, we put together a new incident support plan for the next seven days. Uh, most all the emergency support functions are at normal operations, uh, transportation, communications, public works, engineering, road and bridge. Uh, with firefighting, uh, normal operations, but we're spending a little more time. We have weekly meetings. As a matter of fact, there's one going on now that I'm going to try to get on. Uh, but we're having the weekly federal, state, sheriff, and local fire departments and Office of Emergency Management. And we're preparing for this year's fire season, so we're keeping uh, track of that and not trying to lose that amongst the COVID issues. Um, emergency management information and planning, we're still doing really well. Uh, we've got some recovery operation plan guidance out there for all the emergency support functions, so that should work well. Uh, let's see, anything else that's going on, everything else? Hey, where the hell are you at? I'm sorry? Uh, oh. that, that, that was uh, someone that just got on that hadn't muted themselves yet, but it's taken care of. Okay. All right, thanks. I uh, thought there was a question. My hearing's not so great, you know. Uh, this time, that that's a, a good so thing. There was a question. Mass, uh, Mass care operations, uh, we're doing well in that in case we have any issues. Uh, logistic management, we're doing well. The state's uh, starting to uh, uh, see that our need is there. So that's really well done. And that's uh, through the effort of everybody, including the state. Uh, as I said, almost everything's in normal operations. The, the hospital is still uh, at the same status that they've been in. Uh, Health department still working hard at, uh, you know, contact uh, tracing. Our Colorado results are there. Uh, they got posted last night. Uh, that are, uh, and then, of course, our safety concerns. Uh, you know, we're up to 25 
uh, in our county uh, with the uh, the two deaths. So uh, we can foresee that slowly coming up with more people being out and about, with more testing going on. Uh, but we are, uh, are, are we do we are surrounded by a lot of other uh, cases that are, are building as well because of this opening. And then you can see there La Plata County, uh, 65 with one death. And then San Juan County, uh, Colorado actually has their first case. Uh, Archuleta County has eight, San Miguel's 22. And then San Juan County, New Mexico went up quite a bit, 1,107 with 71 uh, deceased. Apache County, Arizona, 727 and 10 deaths. San Juan County, Utah, 149 with three deaths. And then the Navajo Nation went up quite a bit, uh, 2,973 with 90, uh, 98 deaths. Of course, they're going up because we're getting a lot more testing done, which is really good. Uh, that's going to make a difference. What I'm planning on doing, there is a Four Corners State Regional Meeting that we're going to have Thursday. So I'll be on that call to find out what anybody's doing in their states and, and you know, trying to get our arms around uh, what's going on in our Four Corners region more so than, uh, you know, anywhere else. Uh, I do have a list of the, the case timeline there uh, for your review. And then uh, energy is up and running, normal operations, public safety and security is all normal operations. Uh, uh, hey, Jim, our our Jim. public information people are uh, doing one heck of a job. They're sending out a lot of information out there. And Jim, uh, if you get any Jim. kind of comments, Jim, we have can you issues hear me? where we think there's hey, a... Hey, Jim, can, you hear the can, you, can you hear me? No. No, okay. Sorry. What are these, though? Uh, I've got my mic on. That one. Kind of muffled. Can you hear this one? I can hear you kind of muffled, sir. How about now? A little bit better. Okay. I think it's probably coming through somebody else's microphone and not yours, Commissioner Attell. Okay. Because you're, you're super quiet. Hey, let's try this one. How about this one? Can you uh, hear me now? That's a little better, yeah. yeah. Better? Okay, Jim, uh, a question I have. Go back up to the number of counts in Montezuma County. And you're showing we have 25 COVID cases in Montezuma County, and it shows 13 have recovered. So, so why, why don't we show that as tw now that we have 13 recovered out of that 25? Why aren't we showing that we have 12 positive cases still in Montezuma County, not 25? I don't know. I was getting a lot of these statistics off of the public health site. Okay. Well, let's 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 talk to our public health people, uh, Bobby, and and um, and see why. When you have 13 recovered and you show 25 positive active cases, then obviously there's got to be some math done there that there should be, if they're recovered, there should be subtracted from that positive case number, I would think. Yes, sir. You know, we had that discussion uh, yesterday in our staff meeting, and uh, uh, some of the people that are still uh, the positive cases some of them uh, were waiting until they actually feel better. Some of them had recovered, uh, and then they started feeling bad again. They kind of relapsed into a little bit of sickness, so that could be why some of them have not been documented as recovered yet. And then there's a, 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 the most recent cases that we've had this week. They're still under quarantine, and they're, uh, they're I think, I don't know where they're at. Uh, we're not privy to that, but I know that they're still recovering from the virus until they get to feeling better. So I'm going to say from our conversation yesterday, and Jack, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think that's where we're not getting the, the full amount of recovery until they're fully recovered. We want to make sure they're... Uh, I think you're right about that, but I think what Commissioner Artell is saying is 25 minus 13 and two deaths which is 15, uh, or yeah. 13 and two deaths is 15 from 25 is 10 active cases. So I think what Artel is saying is, is that we should uh, have a column that says active cases. 
Right. Yeah. We, yeah, and that would just be adding another number. I mean, what what's mandated to be reported is how many positive cases there have been. Um, but certainly, uh, you know, we can we can deduce from that that those are not all still active. Well, because it's, I thought it was simple. Either you had it or you didn't. Is there anything that that you either test positive, or you test negative, or you had it and you recovered from it? I mean, which. The, 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 well, these numbers I, I skew. That's all the numbers they, that they're saying. They keep skewing what we've actually got going on here, and I don't like that, because if we've got if we've got 13 recovered out of the 25 people that have tested positive through the course of this whole deal, why are we not showing 10 positive and 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 making that making it show that we don't have that many we don't have that many active cases going. I don't think it says active. I think it just says positive. So if the right. way so I the read it is if you never go down, but he's asking for a column that says this is the active. We don't have 25 sick people. Right? Well, right. that's what I want to know. It's how many sick people we got in this county, in the hospital or wherever they're at. Right. Okay. Cause yeah, I can. I can. Because uh, I can it, make. Sure. Yeah. We we can have another column there that might say active cases. That that might be better. Well, if you don't want to scare the hell out of everybody, it probably yeah. would be. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to keep scaring them, you keep making that number get bigger. So right now it just shows, in reality, 10 <coughs> positive cases. Go ahead, Jim. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. okay. No, that's fine. Uh, let's see. Uh, public information. Uh, our National Guard guys helping out pretty well uh, and uh, they're they're working hard at keeping uh, actually a lot of us on track and they're very helpful so they're going to be around for a while uh, they haven't got their official orders but they're probably going to assist us until June 1st for sure and then maybe a little later we uh, we still have some uh, help going to the senior center for delivering meals so we should be good there uh, everything else seems I'm sorry. Uh, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Jim. Okay. And then uh, historic culture and preservation and business industry. It looks like we're doing well. Uh, we're still working with the, uh, the businesses, uh, over 500 businesses, and we're getting the survey information back. The, the chamber's working with them. Shaq's working with them. Uh, so we're trying to get them all up and running the best we can. Uh, and then... Uh, our estimated cost now, uh, it went up. Uh, we, we were assisting in some of the other loans. Uh, I don't have the breakdown in front of me. Uh, Shaq may have that, but we're up to 142866 uh, for actual cost, which is a lot lower than I predicted. Uh, so uh, we're doing well there for now. We're getting a lot of uh, volunteer supplies, and uh, we're getting a lot of great help from the community. So. Jim, I would ask, so, Shaq, do you have the breakdown? I think that it's very important that we have the breakdown because I want to give you an example. Uh, Alamosa County has spent $45,000 on 30-some cases. So I figured ours up before the, the, the ones that we have had here last week that we were spending $5,600 per case. And I don't know what that, since you've added this new number, but it would be very interesting if the public was to know exactly where that money was spent. It's their money. And they have the right, right to know how that yes, money sir. is broke sure. down. Yes, sir. I know that we have, uh, I can give you what I know and the breakdown uh, is the loans that we're giving out to the business community is uh, 80,000 of that. that so and that's good to know. See, that's, that's what I'm so getting that, at. That's the money that we gave to Region 9 to loan out to businesses. Jim is included in that. Yeah, and yes, then we sir. have the hospital money that would be included in that as well, right? Correct. Yes, that's the thirty-five thousand for that uh, unit for so rapid right, testing. So that's so eighty, and thir there, that's there's one hundred thirty thousand out right there, almost one hundred forty thousand. One hundred fifteen, is that right? Yeah. I missed your math because I was grabbing my numbers. But as of yesterday, 80. we spent one hundred forty-two thousand eight hundred sixty-six dollars and forty-eight cents. Uh, we've spent. Seventy-five thousand well, with the five thousand for region nine. We've spent eighty thousand assisting businesses. 
and we spent thirty-six thousand five hundred and ten on uh, the equipment for the hospital. Yeah, and, and so it, that's a big chunk. Yes, that's and that's what the public needs to know yeah. because they ask all the time, "Where, where is that money going?" So the bulk of our money has gone to trying to help our local businesses and trying to get the testing supplies that we need so the businesses can reopen. And and, yeah. and I wanted that point made. That's yeah. why so one hundred and thirty-six thousand because we allocated a hundred and right at a hundred or one hundred five. Uh, one hundred five. Hundred thousand for the loans and five thousand. For the administration, so 105,000 went just to help our local businesses, and the 36 plus thousand for the rapid the testing, which work, helps right. the entire community. Right. So out of that, th so, that's a big chunk. So of that money. leaves so about seven thousand dollars that we've actually spent some other some other place from 135 so to 140 people. So that's right. uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty manageable. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good yeah. call. Good ask. Yeah, so uh, overall minimal for the actual uh, uh, cost on per, I guess, if you really wanted to look at it per patient, it was, uh, you know, with the PPE is pretty minor. Uh, the, right. the major cost is assisting the community. So, yeah, it works out really well uh, for that. Uh, that's all I have, gentlemen. For now, uh, we're, we're going to continue to move ahead. We have uh, various... Uh, activity, uh, key activities and priorities in our plan, which I will get out hopefully today, uh, pretty soon this morning. But uh, we have the, it's almost identical to the other plan. We've added just a, a couple more uh, procedures and, and the priorities are the same. So our, our plan is good for another week. And, uh, uh, you know, hopefully nothing major changes and we can move ahead. All right, any questions, commissioners? Of the emergency manager. No. Nope. Nope. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Mr. Spratlin. We appreciate it. Thank you, gentlemen. Planning department's up next. We have uh, Don Haley, our planning director, and Jane, their assistant planner. Good morning. We're good. Ladies and gentlemen. So, first up, we've got uh, a couple of. Uh, Resolution amendments for Mosier's. And Chef, it's in your Dropbox. Oh, okay. Um, Probably go to the. Go to go. Keep going, right there. There you go. So they've got they've got two pieces of property. One with the house uh, there, the square, and then the. Uh, the other reversed L shape is all Igland, mm -hmm. and they both were created by resolution. So we're amending both of them. They want to move the um, the property line there where the house is. They want to move that about 50 feet north. It's 61 feet. 60 feet north, just mm -hmm. so that they can have less less property with the house and increase the uh, ag land that they're looking to sell. They've uh, got a driveway permit for access directly to that ag land from the county road. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they're just looking to do that. And so it's an amendment to both um, previous resolutions just because they're both, both affected that way. Okay. Any questions, Commissioner? <coughs> That's all there is, just that one boundary moving 61 feet to the just north? Just 61 feet. Right. Yeah, it, it adjusts at about a half an acre, but that's... So it's just a boundary adjustment. A manner, okay. Yeah. In, it, but because in reality, it was created by an exemption, it has to be an amendment to the exemption. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything? You good with that? Yeah. Uh, I would move uh, for the approval of uh, exemption for to the First Amendment number p56-82 to johnny and shirley Mosier on property located at 14236 road 21 cortez second motion is second to approve an exemption number uh, one amendment number p56-82 submitted by johnny and shirley Mosier on property located at 14236 road 21. all those in favor aye aye, aye. Now you have to do the other amendment. 
Mm -hmm. I'm P to P80. Okay. You know, I don't know if I should recuse my. I hadn't even thought of that. I guess I should probably recuse myself from that. Being a relative, is that appropriate? They don't claim you. I know. They don't. <laughs> but, but if we ever got down to the court with Mr. Lovett over there, they would they would say, uh, well, I don't care what well, you claim. Okay. <laughs> I would move that we uh, approve the amendment P-60.80 submitted by Johnny and Shirley Mosier on property located at 14236 Road 21, Cortez, Colorado, consisting of 12 acres more or less. Second. <coughs> second. There's been a motion and a second to approve the amendment P-60-80 submitted by Johnny and Shirley Mosier on property located at 14236 Road 21, Colorado. All those in favor? Aye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Sorry, it took me a while to wake up to that one. Figure out who you were related to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> remember, remember who you're related to? Yeah, yeah. It's tough, doesn't it? Yeah, some days it is. <laughs> some days it is. Then our second plat is just um, one that's been approved for Griglack on the uh, boundary line adjustment over in Mancus Ranches. So that's just a signature we don't that's need That's just anything. correct. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just a signature on, on that one. So we're going to do two signatures now? Mm -hmm. Yes. We'll start with those. Okay. Is that the Mosier one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll stay off of that one. Okay. Well, then you stay off of the plat, too. I'll stay off that <laughs> plat, too. Yeah. You're signature free so far. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. There's a, yeah, you got oh, Thank you. <coughs> okay, I see that oh, it's working. The, uh, the next thing on our agenda is going to be Sky Mesa State's request for local improvement district. So before you leave, I can I just I wanted to bring one thing up, and so I was. One of the big things that I've been talking about for the last couple of months, just because of the contacts that I have in the meat industry, is about um, a shortage of meat through a bottleneck. And then it's, it's starting to come out to play um, with the meat shortage. It's not that we're short of, of meat in the United States. It's just the way that the process works. And um, one of the ways to um, fix that is to have more local butcher shops, more local places where you can take the the processing, local processing, where they just do one a day or two a day. And um, I was contacted that there, somebody is wanting to put another one in. They, because of the, the financial restraints, because of what's been going on with COVID, uh, they were informed that, um, that 
to move forward with what their, their plan was to open it up another processing, a local processing plant, was that they were not going to move forward because uh, of a $10,000 road impact fee. And so, you know, you, everybody talks, well, what is it that the county commissioners could do to, to help out? And you have to think long term. This is Jim, this is Jim, uh, Commissioner Candelaria's long five year plan. And that is, is, is I'm suggesting that that we that the commissioners suspend road impact fees until further notice and if we was to do that what we would do is we would get somebody like this that wants to do this meat plant and they would go in business they would hire people and then at a later date reinstate the the road impact fees so i just i would like to have a discussion about that well, I think that's an appropriate uh, suggestion there. You know, we, we're often asked how we can incentivize. What can the county commissioners do to incentivize business to come to our county or, or the communities? And I remember back when we were talking with uh, uh, Aspen Wallwood and, uh, and the Excelsior uh, gentleman, uh, Mr. His name escapes me. But anyway, he wanted, wanted to know if we could do, and we could do some property tax breaks for him. Although the school district and all that, the bulk of his property tax is made up school district and other special districts. What we could incentivize him through just the county was very minimal, uh, almost insignificant. Here's where we've got two businesses. We've got the, 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 black, uh, the black Rock Wood Producers, uh, oh. Rockwood, rock, Ironwood, Ironwood up there, and now we've got another one that are that are asking for impact fees, road impact fees, to help incentivize their business. And I think this is a a perfect place for us to be able to incentivize somebody to go into go into business in Montezuma County, where we can really make an impact. I think their road impact fees up there were like fifty-two thousand dollars, and we're talking ten thousand dollars here. That that's significant. That's a significant incentive. Uh, to a business that that wants to do business in Montezuma County that that we're in control of that we can that we can make a decision on so I I think that's an appropriate ask there's a there's another county that's already done it it was it's Rio Blanco mm -hmm. but then after things was to you know get turned around sure here, sure we can always go back and re-implement them implement, yeah. implement them back what are you, what are your thoughts? I, I I'd have to look at it I mean uh, I realize that the road impact fees are there for a purpose and how they were developed, I don't have enough history on that. Mm -hmm. And the fees that go along with it, as for per mile or per lot or, or however that that is. So I, I would like to look at it with the planning department to see what, you know, what. I first think of they all, figure by how traffic they impacts. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and because it impacts the entire county, I understand the road impact fees are the money is spent within a five mile radius, but they impact all of the counties so you know how were they developed i guess is my question to you all um and and what was the significance of the cost per mile how was that done and you know but it goes back to the entire um to the entire plan you know wh what are their things i mean we should be looking at all of those and and updating that um not just well, it, it's a long history of how they were developed. I mean, it started back main, mainly the way they are now back in 08, 09. But they're actually cheaper now than they were back then. Mm -hmm. In the inception in the late 90s, it was quite significant for road impact fees. Because um, they were charging like $2,800 per lot plus $100 per mile. And that was... Oh. Per, per either a lot for residents and or a lot. But, but for commercial, it's based commercial. on the square footage of the actual building. So it it varies depending on, you know, if, if, if it's a small building and they've got stuff going on outside or if it's all internal within one big warehouse, office building situation. And it's, it's a different rate per square foot depending on the type of business. See, and I look at it differently. I look at it like, uh, number one, does the county really need it? Uh, and, and so that the person to ask actually would probably be the road department because they're the ones that actually I, fix the roads. Yeah. They would be, and so if, if they didn't have road impact fees for a short period of time, 
How would that impact the road department? I think. Uh, what oh. What have you collected no, last no, year no, in no. road impact oh. fees? What What were your collections last year? We collected around two hundred, a little over two hundred thousand dollars last year. Last year. For road impact fees. All I know is if we end up having a shortage of meat, and if there is a way that we can help somebody keep uh, more local processors uh, start that business, then if you're thinking long term for the health and welfare of this county, then yep. I would rather forgo the ten thousand dollars to I feed. I think we could. I think we can adjust anything. Yeah, I, I think I, that's within our. What I would like to see is Legal this this, gentle, this person that wishes to do this processing plant get with the planning department, come in and do do their show us their plan, what they're going to do, and then then give us the opportunity to, at that time to make a decision on those impact fees, whether we waive them or not. You know, gives us a chance to see who's going to do it, what they're going to build, how much it's going to benefit. You know, and, and is this and it. is this proposal only for businesses or is this for everyone? So uh, I was thinking more of businesses. However, this is a dis this is a, a the start right. of a discussion, right? Between yeah. all of us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it, I think well, the other thing to keep in mind, if if a rancher wants to butcher two steers a, a week on his property, there's nothing required. No, there is if he wants to sell it for retail. Yes, if he wants to sell it for retail, but I mean, if, then he has to if, if somebody buys it and just has him do it as part of an agricultural deal now if now if you're going through and then it's inspected and all that but i mean if it's just run as part of an, an ag operation and not like a big commercial processing plant then the land use code has provisions for for operating under agricultural guidelines right. so it all all just depends on how much and and how you're operating it I mean, there's, you know, every everybody in the county slaughters and processes their own their Deer, own animals. You know, so that that's where actually where I'm going is we have a lot of people out there that have the knowledge to, to actually butcher and cut up meat. They have the equipment already. And um, however, the law reads, I'm very vers versatile on the law, is you have to be USDA inspected if you want to put a counter on Diamond D. And anybody from Cortez drive out there and, and right. buy some hamburger. Right. And, and that, that's the law that actually has to be changed throughout the United States. Wyoming has came up with a, a way to go around that to where, you, uh, so you have to have a brand inspection, you know. So, so if, I, if right. something is slaughtered and without the brand inspection, then you're breaking the law. And so the way that Wyoming went around the, the USDA law is they, put everybody's name in the county, which think how confusing and hard this would be. <laughs> name on the on the brand, they're right there. And so when somebody wants to buy it, then their name is like they own part of whatever was just mm. butchered. Well, but that would be very complicated to do. One of the suggestions that I had, one of them is, is there, all of these, these local butchers are already state, state inspected. Uh, an idea that I had thought of it is let's have our health department inspect them I mean, if our health department is good enough to inspect uh, uh, a restaurant where we could all eat the wrong thing and die, then they should be good enough to inspect a meat uh, processing. processing facility where there's probably less working parts, if you think about it. Um, but that's a long ways down the road. So how do we get these guys in business? How do we change that law? And I mean, in the end, we're, what we've got going on right now, none of, none of us have ever experienced before. And as commissioners, it would be very, it would be, the best thing would be is if we were self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. So if one of those big plants goes down like they're going down and all of a sudden we don't have meat at Safeway, if we was to do things to where we could fill the gap, like, you know, we had 10 guys out there that was, could kill a, something a day. Mm -hmm. Right now we have, and I've, I've already been asked because of, I, own, I know a guy that owns a trucking company, and he went, he's going to South Dakota, and he's buying these pigs from a man that raises 50,000 pigs a year, and the government's paying him $89,000 to kill them and then grind them up in a wood mulcher and because the packing plant is closed down. Smithfield's in South Dakota. It's a 14-hour drive, 
and he can buy them for 90 cents, which is just unheard of a, a pound. And then he can bring them back, and he's doing it in Utah right now, but they've got enough local butchers to where a yeah, local yeah. butcher will say, I'll take 33 pigs. You know, he can put 110 on a truck, 30,000 mm -hmm. 30, 30, pounds. And then these butchers are killing them, and, and th their laws are a little bit different. They kind of got to deal like Utah, I mean, uh, Wyoming. But that's the objective of, behind it is someday, wouldn't it be nice if we had our own energy, we had our own food sources, and we didn't have to rely on everybody else. So I guess I have a question because, I'm, I mean, mine is going to be specific to road impact fees for somebody opening up a new plant. So they, you're suggesting that our health department inspects them instead of USDA. How do they get around USDA? So that, USDA that would have to be. already doesn't. Colorado Department of Ag inspects the local butchers. Well, no, but you well, have to retail, have a though, USDA. Right? You have to have a USDA. Yeah, so Sunnyside is USDA. Uh, the new plan in Macus, I believe, was they said are. that they were going to get USDA. certified. Correct. The problem with USDA is there's very few inspectors. The red tape is just ungodly. It takes forever for those guys. So is that something that we can do? Well, that's something that we can advocate for, but it would have to be a law change at the, in Washington, D.C. From Federal public level. health to be able to to do our to my knowledge for, and I, I, I deal with a lot of people in the meat industry out the United States is there hasn't been one of these local guys that's had a what do they call it when you get food poisoning uh, salmonella. Salmonella. salmonella outbreak you haven't ever heard of diamond D having a hamburger recall have you mm -hmm. or so they're safer in my opinion there's they're localized they they're have smaller. somebody come in they're smaller less moving parts and that's what we need to work for but so if we want somebody else so you're work. saying that and uh, no, sorry for interrupting ahead, so if we waive their road impact fees for them to give that money to allow for the usda retail just allow them to is get that started. is that what you're saying because to me that i haven't really thought of that but that's sense. a great idea so that's a great we're idea we're going to waive which then would give them that opportunity to get usda inspected which then creates a retail that's a, that's a great idea. Is that what, so? I wasn't thinking that, but I think that's a great idea. So, I mean, that's a different conversation because then that does allow. I, th I think I think all of that goes into the <coughs> business plan of this gentleman that's trying to open up a processing right. so plant. I, I would looking, like to hear from him yeah. and, and see what his plan actually shows because if that's if that's what they're they're going to do because I don't know who is USDA here and who isn't, but. Now that that could be an incentive to move somebody farther down the road quicker because of right now we don't have our public health department that can do mm -hmm. USDA inspections. To, to my mm -hmm. knowledge, there is no USDA in Monsoon County. It's just in at Sunnyside and Drake. It's in La Plata but, County. Well, from from well, Omni, he just Mominee, bring, he, he brings the inspector in once a week. Oh, okay. And so that's why he oh, does his right, in a right, batch. So they inspect in those that are those that are being pinned. Mm -hmm. Before slaughter, he watches them for the slaughter and he checks those that are in the freezer. So we do have, and so they just do yes. one batch a week, he's so that Macus. he's over here once a week. So we but do have somebody. That he's comes on road thirty nine so and make us. He, he, the inspector doesn't live here. No, he correct. He has to he come travels from here. somewhere. But also, let's think of animal welfare. So if if it was done differently, I mean, he's doing what he's doing is he's putting them in a really little tight pen. And he's doing it because of this inspector having to come once a week. I, I haven't seen the process, but I can, in my mind, I'm thinking about it. If it would be more humane for the animals if if they weren't all put in that little pen for him to come inspect them. And I would think that the other way, because Diamond D has a, a, a certain size crew to 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 process. I think it's one a day. I might be wrong on that. So, not I don't know how you say his name. Mominy. Mominy. Mominy would have to have it would look to me like an extra size crew to process all of those because he has to do it in a shorter time frame is that true i don't know he's he's I, well his plan was to do 10 a week uh -oh. he's got five pins he puts two two steers in each pen and that way they they water them but they don't feed them just so it cleans them out okay for uh but but also it's it's the containment um that's the big aspect is you can't just run all that into a leach field so you have to go through and that's part of the usda process is mm -hmm.
containing all the waste, they actually drum it, freeze it, and sell it as a byproduct. Well, as they well. use every. So, so they, they use. They use every part. Use the bones, part. bones, yeah, the guts yeah, and they're everything. They're freezing it and. Yeah, I mean, right. So really, the, the only wastewater is when they hose things down at the end of, of the butchering. So I think really what, where you're trying to get is, a, is how do we incentivize a business to become a retail USDA local Well, I think that we'll never, we'll never fix the bottleneck unless we take away the USDA um, inspection. And the reason is keep the USDA inspection at those, those, 80, those big packing plants but use your local health departments or even your state inspector for the local um, process. Just because of logistics, you know, how far away they are. And, and I, I believe we would have less uh, um, food poisoning, chance of contamination with the process being that way than the way it is now. I, I would have to agree with Commissioner Tell. I think there's a lot we could do here if we see the plan of uh, whoever has the proposal that yeah well, we see uh, what I mean, they I want would, to do well, what if there's five guys behind this I don't even know the gentleman's name I mean I'd have to reach back out but there might be five people behind him want to do the same thing if they if they see that the, the county is like understanding how detrimental this COVID has been to our economy and what we're trying to do to help them get started again my plan about the impact fees was until further notice meaning that yes they could they would be reinstated uh, after things start turning around, but you know, there's been drastic decisions made. I think that we could make drastic decisions as well. Mm -hmm. Is what I'm saying. But anyway, yeah. it's a we need to have a conversation about it. Okay. Sorry about that. Let's go back to uh, Sky Mesa and the state's request for a local improvement district. We have Ken Lovett here mm -hmm. representing them. Thank you, Don and Jane. Yeah. Thank you, thank Planning you. Department. Change your battery. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you for taking time to talk to me this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So we spoke. Um, if if you all remember, it was it would have been myself and Miss Mary Ann Finley just over a month ago uh, regarding the Sky Mesa Estate Subdivision submitting a petition to the commissioners uh, requesting a local improvement district, which, as you can see, the subdivision uh, plat is up on the screen there. That there. Sky Mesa Estates uh, road that goes through the subdivision would be um, paved according to um, the standards placed in the petition. <clears throat> the, the Board of Commissioners brought up several concerns um, during that, as well as uh, Mr. Engelhart brought up some, some concerns. And from that point, we decided to kind of get us back on the schedule, allow uh, Mr. Baxter and I to speak a little bit, allow me to go back to the subdivision and talk. And I guess one, you know, a real big concern that the, the Board of Commissioners had was, you know, is doing this somehow um, projecting additional liability or additional burdens on, on the county and the county road department that that would maybe not be something the county wanted to get into. Um, in my conversations with Mr. Baxter and I, John, you can hear me, correct? He, he uh, can. He was talking, John. but he was on mute. Okay. Even better. If he can't hear me, I can say whatever <laughs> I want. Um, Go ahead, John. <laughs> I can hear you. Okay, good. I, I just want to be sure I don't mischaracterize any of our conversations. So um, I, I think that through John and I's conversations, I'm very confident in telling the commissioners that approving this petition is essentially going to make this like any other county road, except that the residents of that subdivision are going to pay for the initial improvements and all further improvements. Meaning, you know, in five years from now, seven years from now, whenever it may be, if there needs to be some improvements on this road, yes, a, a member of that subdivision could certainly call the, the county and say, hey, I think this needs to be done. That's really no different than any county road. You know, if you live on a county road and you, you feel like some maintenance needs to be done, uh, you, you might make a phone call. However, it's up to the road department if and when they get to that particular issue. 
there's no specific ability by um, approving this local improvement district. There's no additional leverage for anybody in that subdivision to demand any sort of um, improvement further on down the road or demand that this be done or demand that, you know, it, they could they call the road department and complain? Yeah, they could right now. Um, it's just the difference would be in the future if, if the road department determined to go down there and do an improvement to do another layer of chip seal or whatever it may be, then the expense of that repair, maintenance, improvement would be chargeable by the county back to the residents of the subdivision through a levy on their real property taxes. Oh, for maintenance and upkeep on down yes. the road? Oh, yeah, so. That's what uh, this whole statutory scheme that this local improvement that is brought in front of you, that's how it's going to get paid back is mm -hmm. through property the initial, tax. what the petition states is through the, the, the initial cost, right. the, the county, not the county, I'm sorry, the subdivision is requesting that that additional upfront cost be amortized over a 10-year period um, on the 14 lots mm -hmm. that are in that subdivision. Right. And it's going to be, yeah, it would be tied to the real property <coughs> taxes. But then did I understand you to say, Keenan, that ongoing maintenance, let's say in seven years, that chip seal starting to wear out and it's starting to crocodile and it's starting, mm -hmm. to, starting to lose this stuff. The maintenance and that upkeep on that will then be still be the responsibility of the lot owners for the county to come in and retreat that uh, retreat that road. That is what the the petition is stating. Yes, okay. that is what the subdivision wants. They understand that. I, I spoke yeah. to the subdivision, and they're very clear that they have no. Like I said, it's not like in seven years if they wanted something done, they could demand it. I mean, they can ask for it to be done. They right. can let the county know something needs done. Right. Right, but at that point, it's it's in the road department. And if the road department says oh, we we can't get to it for mm -hmm. two years, whatever it, whatever it may yeah. be, but when they get to it, then the the monies and the effort spent to do that improvement can then be charged back on right. the real property taxes. Yeah. Um, Mr. Baxter and I have discussed. In addition to this petition, uh, an agreement being struck between the, and I, I believe this is really what the statutes say anyway, but I, the subdivision is certainly fine in entertaining if, if the commissioners wanted an agreement that made it very clear that there, this is adding no additional liability on the county um, and that, uh, you know, they really have no ability to demand the county do improvements. And that the other thing that I wanted in there on behalf of, of the subdivision is that the only improvements that the county could do would be at the same level as originally petitioned. You know, therefore, if the county decided they wanted to put an interstate through there, you know, <laughs> yeah. they, they're not going to pay for, for something they can't afford. They don't want street lights. They don't want, you know, all kinds of... of they want a traffic signal. Down yeah. There. So if it was over and above what they originally petitioned for, well, then that would be on the county. Yeah. But they so, just want a chip seal. So, so then the, the, the interior snow blading and all that will be left to the subdivision, not to the county? Is that the is that same, same idea that uh, the blading and all that stuff will, will um, be left to the subdivision? Well, I think we blade it now, right? Or do we? No. no, I don't believe no, so. It's, no, it's a red. It's a red road now. It's it's red. We don't do anything. So the the way the um, the petition reads right now, no, the the county would would do all that. Would do that. Yes. Okay. So they're going to maintain it just like it was a county road. Yep. Except when it comes to repair, maintenance, or resurfacing, then the lot owners will will be responsible for that. Um, the way I understand the statutory scheme is, is even if the county wanted to go in there and charge them a little bit for running the blade through there, they could do that. Mm -hmm. Which, which then this is kind of a question for John. And um, So setting up an SID or an LID typically is done through a bond, which takes 
a year, two years, sometimes three years. So, mm -hmm. is kind of how this statute reads the way I read it. Is that correct, John? It, it's, it's it can be bond. done through a bond, and that's that's very possibly how we would do it. So, I, I mean, this is something that even if it's agreed upon, that it can't be done like tomorrow. It would have to go through this process to get this bond, and then to set it up. So that that maintenance and those requirements are then taken care of throughout the throughout the life of the perpetuity of, but, but of I got a question, John. So. If I don't see why a bond is necessary, if we're the ones that collect the taxes off of their houses, a bond is something that you use for leverage, right? Well, aren't we the ones that charge up taxes on their houses? Isn't that the same type of leverage? I mean, I, I don't know. know how to explain yeah. that, but well, I. I, I think the, that we look back to what they did out at the Goodman Point Water, that special improvement district that they did on their water. Uh, uh, and, and we closed that out here a few years ago. But it's the same, same idea that, that we, the county, are just going to be the entity, and, and I think we're probably even more closely tied to this project than they were on that rural water development out there at Goodman Point. Uh, they wanted to do a special improvement district, put in a water line and service a bunch of people out there on Goodman Point that didn't have rural water. So they did it through the county mm -hmm. and the, the levies were assessed to the property taxes on all those individuals out there, got the repayment Correct. back. And, well, and but so it goes, it goes no, then to, uh, tied to a bond in the way no. I understand. No. I don't think the it was. I, I think understand the, the road situation and I could be wrong, but that way it doesn't it doesn't come out of your general fund and it doesn't come out of your roads. Use the um, bond as the funding mechanism. The bond is the funding mechanism so, for an LID or an SID. Yeah, and, if and, I understand that statute correctly. So can I address that? You bet. I don't. So, so the way that statute works is, is the local improvement district can be funded a mul multitude of different ways. Right. And what you're reading, you are absolutely correct. One of the ways is, is a bond. A local improvement district does not always have to be brought to the county commissioners by like a subdivision. Right. The county mm -hmm. commissioners could say, look, we have a need right here. We have a downtown district that needs improved. So we're going to go out and pass a bond to create this local improvement district. Mm -hmm. So that is a way it can be done. Some local improvement districts, there's another part of the statute that allows for it to be done through like a sales tax mm -hmm. that is only would only be chargeable in the, the boundaries of the local improvement district itself. Or what, um, what the subdivision has done here is just said, hey, we want this done. We're bringing this to you. We, we don't have the money. They don't have in their, their little HOA, you know, $130,000 to do this. And, and so they're coming to the, the county to fund it. Now, if the county, w wanted to fund it through a bond, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, or they could choose to fund it through their, their general fund and get, get paid back by, by the levy on the real estate taxes. I think the subdivision was interested in the, the real estate taxes direction because <laughs> it alleviates in the future them having to try to eventually that bond's going to run out. I mean, you, you're not going to get a bond that's good for 50 years of maintenance. Okay. So the subdivision didn't want to be, the current residents of that subdivision don't want to be in a place that 10 years from now they're trying to go collect money from in an HOA type setting to try to get, you know, if it's if it's tied to your real property taxes. Yeah, you want to have somebody that's a holdout saying, yeah. oh, I've decided I don't want to pay for it. When it's tied to your real property taxes, people pay. I, I mean, not everyone pays, but maybe there's a little more. I mean, you've got loan covenants on your on your house you've got to comply with and stuff like that, and and the current residents are willing to, as as evidenced by the petition, to say, yeah, we'll have we'll tie it to our real property taxes. But you're right, there is a whole part of that. It can be done through a bond, absolutely. Um, and so I feel like there's more leverage with the property tax. It's the I, same thing we're doing with our weed program. If you don't spray your weeds, we tie it to your taxes. Uh, mm -hmm. If you don't pay your taxes, you, you don't get to live in your home. Well, I mean, you, you have a sheriff's sale and you do. Now you have a piece of property. It's, yeah. all, it's yeah. all tied to the property tax. Yeah. 
all you're definitely time. doing property tax if you do this. Correct. There, there, it's all there's no doubt about that. Can't, it's just a matter of, of if we're going to be the bank right. or if the bond is. Yeah, the and, bank. and I think they need to. They, they will eventually pay us for being their bank. If we do this, there'll be a, there'll be some kind of a either a, a profit on on this road work that we're going to do, or there'll be an interest rate on the on the on the amount of money that we're going to loan them. Because basically, we're banking mm -hmm. them is what we're doing. You're exactly right. What? Uh, how many how many lots out there are uh, are still owned by the developer? Boy, I would have to look. Um, I'm well, I'm I, not too I, sure if there is one still owned. I I there may be one lot. I, I can confirm that and get okay. get back to you. There may be one lot still owned by Vernon Hoffman. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that the it was kind of a, the that. Um, Vernon and and Diana went in with the Sanchez's to do this. I don't believe the Sanchez's own any of the lots. I'm pretty confident when I say that. Yeah. There is one lot um, that, in not the super distant future, uh, past the distant future, and <laughs> um, and not too long ago, I do know that Vernon still owned a lot in there. I do not know if it's been sold. I can confirm that. So, and they have the consensus, obviously, through these signatures of all the lot owners, that they're they're in agreement to do this. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, they of the 14 lots here, we've got 10 signatures. Um, you know, I, I know that that one lot was that they're not on here. Um, I, I think a big reason they weren't is the the particular lot is going through a. Uh, uh, a divorce situation. I don't think the two parties agreed. So mm -hmm. I think there's. So go ahead. By statute, then um, I guess this is a question for the two attorneys. You have this written as ten years. Is that? I mean, that that's a long period of time for that amount of money, too. Is there anything within that statute that says it can be less? Um, there, there's nothing that says it has to be ten years. Okay. The, the so way I read totally it is 10 really years was kind of the max. 10 um, years is the max. Yeah. It could the, be five years. The so max. Then. So that's up to the, the county commissioners and what, what petition they want to accept. I, I think the when when the residents of the subdivision did um, broke down the math, they were comfortable with the additional, they, the additional property tax, tax assessment that would happen if it was amortized over 10 years. Um, the way I understand it is really the, the Board of County Commissioners can take this petition and, and anybody can make their, their own motion as to this local improvement district and put in different parameters. Um, at that point, you know, this would go to public notification to all the affected individuals. And if the subdivision just really didn't like something, then they could come object and it, and it would probably then fold. Um, unless there was enough people that came and said, no, we do like it. Yeah. But I, I don't think that the, the way I read the, the statutory scheme is this petition is what the, the subdivisions bring in to you. Right. You can make a different motion. So the 10 years is just the maximum, which is, okay. That's the maximum the statute allowed was a 10 year payback. So doing that math, it's about nine hundred and fifty dollars a year per lot owner, mm -hmm. roughly. Yep. Depending on. Depending on exactly where the numbers fell, yeah. At, at ten years. So the big question is, where do we get the money? Yeah. So I think mm -hmm. I think we asked Rob um, a month ago, and I, I can't remember Rob if if you remember this or not, but um, I, I mean. Do we have that? Do we pull that out of reserves? Which I'm really uncomfortable at this point in time pulling anything out of any reserves because of what we're dealing with right well, now. I, don't uh, I think we need to look at, at, at reserves and, and what kind of a payback we can. I, I, think, I think we have to look at this as a, as a financial opportunity for the county. Okay, in reality, this is a financial opportunity for us to benefit our citizenry as well as pay our road department uh, something above and beyond because we're going to be carrying these people or we're, we're carrying them for seven years or ten years whatever that that amounts to be so there's going to have to be some compensation for that so it's an opportunity to take yes maybe we have to take uh, some money out of reserves but 
if that's going to pay us back at a rate of six or seven percent on that money, I think it, uh, I think that can be a wise thing to do, because those reserves aren't sitting there earning us anything, and this is an opportunity for those reserves to earn us it, earn it, us some money. I would so agree one hundred percent with that statement. So yeah. I, I see what you're saying there. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, if they're you know if they want us to do this for them and 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 uh, by all means I, f I feel comfortable doing it but if they want us to be the bank we're going to be mr banker and and we're we're, we're going to have to do it and there's going to have to be some compensation for us to do that and uh, what's in that would go back to the subdivision and decide whether they are yeah agreeable yeah. to these terms that we've put forward or right. not and, and i think that the the number that is placed in this petition that 131 400 which i very much understand is, is in no way a bid and, and th that's kind of the the maximum number that the the subdivision was looking at now i i do believe that in that number was some i mean a, a little bit of profit built in in there for the, the and the county has a multitude of ways to do this they, they can do this themselves or they can go out to a private you know if if the county goes out to a private individual and pays them to do it, and that private individual can do it for ninety-six thousand, mm -hmm. then that's fine. Um, and I, I guess if the county's in a position there, they're thinking, you know, hey, let's let's be the bank. I certainly understand that. Um, you know, I think we may, I, I would maybe want a little bit more put in that agreement. I think that that makes a lot of sense to me, or it makes more sense to me. I shouldn't say, I mean, it makes more sense on the upfront. But what about, you know, if the county wants to go in there and charge them X amount of dollars for blading the road or doing an improvement, mm -hmm. um, would there be interest on all future? Oh no. well, I think this is this is a capital. We're talking about the capital project, okay. uh, Keenan. I'm no, I'm not. I'm not ca talking about on down the road okay. when they need a, a pothole patch or something mm -hmm. like that. The, no, this is this is just okay. for the upfront capital capital cost of what we're yeah. going to do. I, yeah. I think that's what you're looking at. Uh, uh, there's My so many factors. Oh. Okay. Well, there's just so many factors. That, you know, <clears throat> Commissioner Tell made it extremely. Uh, excellent point about uh, financial opportunity. The house has become worth more money yeah. when there's pavement yeah, in front absolutely. of them. I don't care who says anything different. I'm married oh, to a realtor, yeah. <laughs> which increases the value of the house, which increases the taxes per year to the county, mm -hmm. copper. In perpetuity. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I but, wish we could figure out a way to do this. I, <coughs> well, I, think, I think I think Rob, I'd like, I'd like for Rob to weigh in here and, uh, and well, give us a uh, give us uh, some input from the road department side well let's go ahead let okay. commissioner what other commissioner yeah, we, yeah. before we go to rob sorry rob yeah um because i had asked because here again i feel that we are crossing into private industry and i had asked if if there were other bids that they had received from private industry um that was a month ago did they get any other bids from private industry and so who did they contact to get those bids so um when this very first started before well before the petition they they had tried they had communicated with four corners materials four corners materials has told them on two different occasions initially when they contacted them so that would have been last fall last summer ish when they contacted four corners materials and they said they don't do chip seal um and mr mr Engelhart said you know they, they're doing some chip seal projects here in the county so check check again and so i, I know miss finley checked again and they said no and so i don't know if it's not a big enough project or, or but they, they've told her no two times they have not given her a bid necessarily because they say we're not going to chip seal that they did refer to um, a company in grand junction but at that Which point part of the same company yeah and then basically they didn't the subdivision didn't really feel that was very local and it's probably going to be somewhat cost prohibitive um, they did communicate with um, Dave Waters who does not do chip seal um, I don't know if they communicated with uh, Candelaria I don't believe I've never heard them say that they communicated with them uh, I, I know that mr. Waters stated that as of right now they don't do chip seal Sorry. Mr. Englehart, can you hear us, Rob? Yeah, no, I hear. 
Um, speaking of contractors, there's some confusion on this because I did talk to Four Corners about this a couple weeks ago and they were prepping a price to give them two weeks ago. I don't know if they got back to him, but they assured me that they were going to. Hmm. And Dave Waters assured me that he's very interested in chip sealing. If there's a market for it, he would get into it. So he's also a owner or, or uh, owns property in a subdivision and he's next in line. He wants to do this too. So there the box is open, here we go. Anyway, other things I'm a little nervous about is not to exceed 131,000. Again, I'm gonna remind everybody, that's a pie in the sky number. I gave Mr. Finley for his proposal today, just a number. Not to exceed doesn't exist in my mind if it's gonna go on for seven or 10 years. I don't know what that number is. Could be less, could be more. I don't like that, not to exceed 131,000 in that uh, proposal. Snow removal, that's a green road function. Uh, we don't we don't snow removal on red roads. So we may want to consider turning this into a green road to make it legal without throughout the county, or we'll be doing red roads everywhere. I don't have the equipment or the manpower to take care of the roads sometimes now the way it is now. You know, last year or so with no snow is not too bad, but on a big snow year, that's uh, we're we're stressed at that point to take care of what we got. Um, Maybe we ought to be a bank. That's fine. Bond it, but let's let the private industry take care of it. And uh, if it turns green, then obviously it's ours. We'll, we'll maintain it for forever. But until it's green, I don't know if we want to go there or not. So there's just a few points. Any questions, Commissioner, for uh, Mr. Engelhart? Rob, if, 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 uh, if the commissioner decided we thought this was a good thing to you, do you have, do you have ample funds in your accounts or reserves to do a project like this? And do you have time to do it? Would it be this year or next year? Well, it would, can it be next year? I don't have the funds this year. Well, I guess we could take it out of reserves. I'm not gonna say we couldn't do that, but I don't have the time. We're already up against the wall with what we've got scheduled this year with uh, time and materials and money. And yeah. I, I don't see us even having the time to mess with this road this year. So it will be scheduled for next year for them. Then, then I would then I would like to ask, given given that given even under best circumstances, our road department's not going to get to that this year, uh, uh, Councillor. Might be it might behoove you and the HOA to get bids from DNL if 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 what Mr. Engelhart said here, there are two other entities that could be interested in doing this chip seal project, uh, both both uh, Four Corners and DNL. And, uh, and then I think it would probably behoove you to see if you guys could do this through a bonding process rather than, because I, I just feel, I feel like I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't know quite how to say this, but if we get into this, if all of a sudden now mm -hmm. that the perception in the county is, well, man, that Sanchez uh, Hoffman subdivision down there, they worked it around and they got, they got their roads chip sealed and paved down there through a special improvement district. The county funded it, county did it. Uh, I don't know that that's a perception we wanna put out there is how the county operates and does its, does its work or do, does its, uh, yeah. I, I don't know, I, 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 I think it would just, would be a lot cleaner if that HOA could find a, a bonding or some other financial instrument to, to, to do this with. And I understand that. I think if they felt like they, they had the, the ability, in particular, the ability to collect the payments on that bond, I, yeah, you know, I think they would probably have, have gone, I mean, I think that's where they would be. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the way, I, just personally, I, I look at it is, you know, and I, and I see that. You know, this subdivision gets it done well then right. every subdivision in the county is going to be there but I guess to me that wouldn't be the end of the world if 10 years from now all the money was back in the county it was back to the county's reserves yeah. through a real tax assessment all that money came back plus like Mr. Sukla said for years I mean for into perpetuity all those lots are getting taxed at a higher rate mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's so, and I, I don't, I don't know that every, and I guess if that w was the way it was, then if we look at, looked at it 30 years from now, the, the tax rolls would just be higher because these, these were allowed to be done. Yeah. 
and and we'll certainly go get other bids I think that's going to bring us I think even the other bids though bring us right back to where we are because they don't have the money to pay four corners right. they don't have the money to pay Dave Waters mm -hmm. even if they do give them a bid mm -hmm. the county if they were to approve something like this doesn't necessarily have to do the work Correct. you know you know dave waters I, I or that. you know but i, I think that's yeah. going to be where the i mean i'm the subdivision is probably going to be back yeah. oh um, can i step in if, if you're right keenan if we want to bid that out to a private contractor that's what price we will charge you to do it then so if we're if we've got such a good number here at 131 thousand something's wrong so <laughs> we're, we're way too low and we need to maybe readjust that, take another look at that. If uh, Mr. Waters or Mr. Candelario or Mr. United, United uh, Materials has a number that's double that, that's what we're going to charge you if we have them to do it. So that's something we probably ought to talk about, commissioners. So. Well, that, that might be the way that, uh, that we, we kind of protect uh, ourselves and our road department is that if we enter into this agreement with that subdivision, that the county will not do the chip the county will bid will will find an, an outside entity to do the work and 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 we're just the bank and we're just the bank yeah and we'll we'll collect it on the taxes that yeah. way we don't pull money out of our reserves we don't pull general fund monies out capital monies out uh they get what they want we get we get paid back over a period of time but it's not money out of our <coughs> Well, I, I can I can tell you right now for me that the ten years doesn't work for me. I don't. I think that's I think that's too long doing this math. Um, I, I would be more amiable to moving it to seven years. Um, I, I think that's a little bit more. How much is that here? If you do, if, if you, well, if you take you the stay whole, with one hundred and thirty-one. Yeah, if name. if you stay with that yeah. number, but there again, if that moves, so. Um, About thirteen hundred fifty a year. Yeah, thirteen thirteen forty is what I have. So that's still not. I mean, it's it's just a little over a hundred dollars a month. So I'm looking at it as if yeah. there if and the improvement to the road is a good thing. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But a hundred dollars a month to pay for that kind of an improvement, I don't think is is a big ask. So I'm I'm not good with ten years at all. I would say five to seven. Well, we're we're um, going to be doing we're going to be doing in, in less than ten years. We're probably going to be doing some on most chip seals are good for what five said, to seven. Rob, he said five to seven on that proposal is what so, Rob had the so, email that was flashing earlier. So, so at that point, I'm, I'm a little bit you know I mean maybe with seven years. You know, I'd have to. I got. I have to go go back to my client. I'm. I'm going to be a little shocked if sure. Miss Finley's not watching. But um, because that seven years, then then that also means possibly or potentially they would need uh, another some kind of a, another yeah. improvement. Not not to say a, a full course addition, but you know, yeah. some kind of maintenance. So, something. Uh, so. I guess what I would maybe ask the commissioners to entertain, and I, I need to go back to my, my client, so I, I don't think a whole lot can happen right now, but then the way I'm, I'm hearing you is maybe the next step needs to be an RFP. Because if, if we go get a bid, I, it's, it's basically worth the paper it's written on, because in the end, it's going to be the county that has to get the bid. Um, which, which because they don't they don't have the money to pay for it. In the end, they're going to be coming to you to ask, right. ask to pay for it. If the county is going to go out into the private sector, we've got to do an RFP. Mm -hmm. And and so, and the RFP can be for next year. You know, that, well, I guess at that point, the RFP could be for this year. That, that particular, it could be, done it could be based, off, based off responses. Mm -hmm. Right. But if, if the RFP comes back, you know we're going to we're going to receive responses and maybe at that time it, it would give the the subdivision an opportunity to amend their petition if, if 131 is not in the ballpark it's not in the ballpark mm -hmm. if yeah. um the the subdivision at that time may say we're going to go a different direction yeah yeah i i think that legitimizes both legitimizes both sides of it keenan I, I really do i think if they get an rfp for the work to be done outside of Rob's estimate and I think Rob 
You gave him an estimate, did you not, Rob? Was that, I mean, that was a ballpark. It, it was a it was a guesstimate. Guess I wouldn't call it an estimate. Guess, guess yeah, it. but it, another thing yeah. too is I'm not promoting work for anybody here, but this uh, Millen's idea with oil into it, uh, CDOT proposed that to us. If you remember on Road B, as an answer to our problems down there when we were working that out, CDOT, all that. Um, at the time, I was pretty nervous about it, but I'm starting to learn more about it, and seeing the results of it, and. I don't know what that cost is compared to chip seal, but I do think the long-term product could be better than chip seal from what I'm yeah. seeing. And yeah, you might have to put a little more money into it, but you're going to possibly get something that lasts many, many years without as much uh, maintenance or overlays in five to seven years or whatever. And I really think everybody should step back and go talk to some of these people that have these ideas. Dave Waters, and I'll just say there's one of them in this area that's doing it. They did a subdivision for uh, Throw a boy out on road in, I believe it is, and it's wonderful. And I think everybody should step back and take a look at other options here. So. Rob, I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand. Was that the, the recycled asphalt? Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah, recycled with the oil. And if okay. you do it right and you screen it correctly and you get the bigger stuff out of the finer, or finer materials are in it, uh, Dave's having some really good success with that product throughout the county now in different places. Okay. So. I was just being sure I understood. I'm, I'm not a road guy, so I want to be yeah. sure exactly exactly what was what was going yeah, on. Before. Hard, but that's so, um, okay, thank you for that. Uh, so, but it is it is a product that I would like everybody to go. I don't know what the cost is. I don't have a clue, so I don't want to say anything about cost. But it is proving out to be a pretty good product. And commissioners, I know you remember these conversations we had. CDOT, that was the way they wanted to appease us with road B, and we chose asphalt. And yeah. uh, we did it for our reasons, but we may have been just as happy with the recycled mineral uh, fines and oil if we just wanted to. We just didn't want to at the time. We, we did asphalt. You, know? so. you, you come out with that to a much closer, almost an asphalt road rather than a chip seal road. Yeah, you do. Yeah, and it is thicker overall. I mean, when they lay it, and then I, and from what I'm seeing, it's holding up without any issues with potholes. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I'll say it again. Chip seal and water do not get along. So if there's any sub water down there or any moisture down there, that's why I said there is no warranty on this because mm -hmm. I don't know what's down there. And if, if the county jumped into this and just went chip sealed it because we want to help, fine, I guess. But how do we be responsible for something that we didn't build in the first place? All we can do is put a little gravel on it, shape it. I don't know what's underneath it. You know, water, sub water, that water gets under that chip seal and up she comes. That's it, you know, so. That's what we're fighting today on Road S and all these other roads and Road M out there uh, east of 145 is, is, is water, so. Creates a lot of problems. Yep. Well, the bidding process, I mean, the RFP request for proposals sounds very interesting. Uh, as a businessman, if I can loan somebody $130,000 when they are sitting on $2 million worth of houses, I, I don't know what they are, mm -hmm. but if they don't pay me, then... Uh, Probably well, more, well over $2 million, honestly. Right. Mm -hmm. So, 130000 and if you guys don't uh, pay me back, I get $2 million worth of houses? <laughs> Woo! The, the SID, LID is a good, it's I a good think it's a very good thing. It's just how we implement it, and yeah. like I said right now, I, I'm not... I don't. Th I think the ten years is too long, specifically. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I don't think you have to go that long. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would be. I would be willing to do seven. Get the R Put the RFP out. Get it done. Because really, in the end, is all it is is we're we're the bank. We're just being the bank. That's all this is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And why don't we have Rob? Uh, uh, well, how much work would you have to do to put that out? How much time is it going to take of you to put that out, Rob, instead of them? As a what, private part to get a bid on it? Yeah, what, how would you feel most comfortable? I don't know, 30 days maybe to get it all put together and, and uh, put it out for bid. And, but again, what do you want? Do you want chip seal or do you want asphalt? I think the owners need to go out and figure out just what they really want yeah. before we try to do something too quick here. There's a lot of options out there. Okay. I, I really think that we're just focusing on chip seal and it's a good product i'm not going to deny that it's not good it's just that there's other ideas that i really wish somebody would take a harder look at if you're going to bond it and and set it up as bank and loan these folks the money then i think we ought to look at something more than just the cheapest route i guess is what i'm looking at what do you think how would you like to respond to that 
Well, I mean, I I don't necessarily dis disagree with him. I th I think it would al it's always, in, in my opinion, the best case scenario to get the best product. Um, I think it's a financial. You know, I, I think the the lot owners need to. I need to have them make that decision. I don't want to yeah. sit here and spend their money. Right. Um, so I think that's a decision I've got to get from the lot owners, uh, just to try to keep the ball rolling as much as possible. Would the commissioners be willing today to give? You know, I think the subdivision could communicate with Rob what exactly what they want. Could the commissioners give Rob the authority today to issue an RFP, so we don't necessarily have to come back and ask for the RFP? Sure. Once the HOA has decided on what they have, whether it be the chip seal or the yeah the regrind of the asphalt. Yeah. And, uh, and, the, and the HOA can go out, the subdivision can go out and do their own research here in the next couple weeks, yeah. communicate with Rob, and then Rob would have the authority to distribute an RFP, and, and we'll kind of see where the cards fall from there. I'd be comfortable with that. I'm, I'm okay with the RFP, but also find out if they're good with seven years. Yeah, I can do that, absolutely. I, I think, 10 years is I think the there. RFP is probably going to be the driving force behind a new yeah. petition, and, and I will and, certainly... And Jim, if they, if they go with a better product, if, if they go, say, they go with this grind, this grind uh, deal, which is a, has better longevity, may have better longevity and a stronger road than Chip Seal, <coughs> 10 years might not, may, may not be out of the question. Well, if they, yeah, if they decide to actually go to a, a mat of better, asphalt, then that, mm -hmm. but that's different. Yeah, right. And You're, what was the length of that road, Rob? It was <coughs> 0.67 or something? 0.66 or something like that. 0.68. 0.68. That was his, his, his guesstimate. In the, yeah, so um, I appreciate all of your input. I appreciate your time, and, and we'll be back in front of you as soon as we can get all some more answers from the subdivision. And thank you. We sure yeah. like, sure like to get it done. Thanks for letting me come in. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank yeah. Thank you, Shaq. Bonnie, are you uh, are you on the line? I am. I am here. Okay, you're up next on some right of entry requests. Okay. So these guys are all rolled over from 2019 because we missed our window. Um, the first one, 29625 Road Emma's and Mary. Um, this whole area we've been focusing on for a couple of years now, trying to clean it up. Um, we've enforced a couple of the properties. We've done a lot of cost share in some of these properties. So this property in particular, we sent notification letters 2015, 2017, 2019. Um, they signed for the certified letter on April 16, 2020, and I have not received any management plan from them. Um, so you can see the pictures, it's Hoy Crest. So we'd like to move forward with treating that one. Um, the next one is County Road 21. This used to be owned by Miller. And we did enforce it back in 2017 for Rushton Napweed and Hoy Crest. But if you don't recede, you're just going to have to keep retreating. Um, and that's the case right now. We did treat it. We got a good kill, but nothing was done. So it's all coming back. Mm. Um, we've had many neighbors complain about this property because they do hay um, in that immediate area. So, oh, the, the property was foreclosed and the bank now owns it. So we sent the bank an enforcement letter. They signed for it 4-13-2020. I have not received a management plan, so I would request to get a right of entry um, to move forward with treating that one again. Hmm. Next is um, to be determined where T.5. You know, it, it looks better than previous years. However, there is still Hoy Crest along one of the two track roads right next to 184. So we would like to get that cleared up because um, we are trying to clean up that entire area of Hoy Crest. CDOT's doing a very good job of getting their stuff cleaned up and as well as adjacent properties. So those are some pictures of that one. Okay, the last one is to be determined road S. 
Um, they have Russian knapweed. They signed for the enforcement letter on 4-2-2020. Um, we've been focusing on this area to clean it up um, from the Russian knapweed and some other species like uh, musk thistle and whatnot. You can see I highlighted some properties in yellow. Um, we enforced one of the properties south of this property. It's circled yellow. Um, the community center, Danny Higgins, um, owns that property around that, and he will be treating that this year. So we're trying to clean up that whole area. Um, and so Rogers, we need to get that nap we treated as well. So that's all I got for you today. Okay. Any discussion, commissioners? No, it sounds like she's been after this for quite a while on all of these properties, so. Non-response non is an answer, so I guess we have to have to take it to the next step so it is so I would move that we uh, accept and grant the resolution granting Montezuma County Wheat program and its designees right of entry onto property to control noxious weeds based on the affidavit of County Weed Supervisor noxious weed resolution number five six seven and eight 2020 second Motion and a second to approve a resolution granting the Montezuma County Weed uh, Program and it's, Jackie, you keep doing that to me. <laughs> keep slashing uh, it. Or it's Desney's right of entry into property of controlled noxious weeds based on the affidavit of our County Weed Supervisor, Noxious Weed Resolution Number 5, 2020, 6, 2020, 7, 2020, and 8, 2020. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. And Megan also took a look at those prairie crest infestations down Cache Canyon on that trail that you were talking about, Larry Don. So she got yes. that mapped and we sent it off to the BLM and they will be treating it soon. Good. Thank you very much. Yeah, so that's great. So whenever you guys see um, prairie crest or a species like this on the BLM or Forest Service, definitely let me know, especially if I can't see it from the public right away, because we are trying to be very aggressive with these guys. Um, so they don't spread anymore. So I believe also, uh, if you was to go on the, from the parking lot on Road M and go the opposite direction, opposite direction west, that um, in Simon Draw, there's some as well that would be on okay. BLM. West side, okay. All right, we're on it. Yeah, the, Thank the you. trail goes right by it. Yeah. Thanks, Bonnie. Yep, have a good day. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you. Let's go to um, IT, Jim McClain. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning, good morning Jim. Good morning, sir. How is everybody today? Pretty good. Oh, we're good. So I think we finally got our audio things worked out. It took us a while to come up with a plan, but you guys sound much better. That's why I'm sitting down here instead of coming up there. I wanted to get a feel for how it sounded. So okay. sounds good now. I don't have a whole lot since last time we talked. Um, we are off the city fiber official um, completely. I finished the last little bit of stuff I had to change yesterday, so everything is pretty smooth. There wasn't really any major hiccups. So that's a really good thing. That'll save us quite a bit of money down the road. Good. Um, Farmers is burying their own fiber right now as we speak. In fact, they ran fiber down behind Annex 3 and that's connecting over to Annex 1, and then they're gonna be boring, and I think they're doing that today. They're boring under the, high, under the uh, road here and coming to our building, so that'll save even more money after that's done because then we'll, we won't have to lease that city fiber either. So that's a big deal. We're talking a couple thousand dollars a month too, so that's a huge difference. Big difference, good job. Uh, um, health department, we're just, you know, working with them, trying to get the dental lab done over there. we got a couple weeks. We have to pull some different wiring because they move stuff around, but it's no big deal. Um, and the only other thing I have right now is we're finishing up some, putting in the card leaders at Annex 3. You guys, most of you have been over there. They're, we have them on the north and south doors. We're putting one on the assessor door inside so they can control who comes and goes. 
and I'm, I'm going to guess we'll probably be doing it on um, all the inside doors down the road here. And that's about all I have. All right. Any questions, commissioners? Yeah. I, how are we doing with our uh, wireless to the landfill and to the fairgrounds and the, the company was putting, hooking up our tower here on the building? Have they gotten all that completed, their tower down at the landfill done? So the fairgrounds is done. Yeah. Um, we're getting 500 meg out there. The tower is up at the landfill, but then when all this um, pandemic stuff started, it kind of got pushed behind. I did email them yesterday, and they're supposed to get back on it. We're assuming it's not going to take more than a day or two to finish it because they've already erected everything. And I have my end ready to go. Yeah. So we should they, be getting that done soon. On them. We want to we see that completed too, Jim. I agree. Yeah. So, and I did kind of drop the ball because I was so busy with other stuff, okay. but I'm back on it now. Okay. Well, thank you, Jim, for the update and, and the good work. We appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. All right, we have, have a good the, day. the county, um, we call him the Terminator, Mike Chenard, <laughs> Buildings and Ground Maintenance. <laughs> the Terminator. <laughs> we ask him hey, to terminate Mike. something, he gets it done for us. Yeah. Good morning. He does. Um, a couple updates for Annex 1. Um, the solar panels are done. They did an uh, inspection on it Friday, nice. and that passed. So we're just waiting from here from Empire to turn it back on. They're going to get a hold of me to click it on. Um, we only had a couple problems with it. They did cut the vent pipes for the bathrooms. Oh, oh they went through the vent pipes? So well, no, they, the solar panels were over the vent pipes, oh, oh. and the vent pipes are usually about this high. And now they're about that high. So I don't know how that's going to affect huh. The bathroom from Benton, we'll see. But they did cut a couple of those when I was up on the roof the other day. And um, well, just have to see how they work, huh? Right, we're gonna have to see how it works out. You we know. can just extend those if they need it, right? Do well, I? We can just extend them if they're needed, right? No, you Shift can't extend them and move them. Or no, better. it's it's like the solar panels are right here and they're sitting right here. So it'd be hard to even get an elbow over to extend oh. them up. It'd be tough to do. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it works out and go from there. It might you, work out do fine. You have any, do you have any room between the solar panel where they cut them off? Did they cut them off generously? Did they? Yeah, they, there's probably about, probably about four inches. Four inches. So, yeah. so you might be able to extend them just a little bit if you right. had to. So. Yeah. But no, I well, bet you that you're going to be fine. I, I tell you, I had a, a, a in my cabin, the, mm -hmm. they said, Everything's got to go through the roof and uh, up there groundhog when you got four foot of snow every time you got Take something going off. through the roof it, The snow takes it right. off. So uh, Against the plumber's will I had him take it out the side Never had a problem that right oh, okay. went up and then went horizontal and yeah, I just went up and went horizontal out the side and then yeah. my roof and you You never have to worry about all that no snow holes. Sure. Huh? No, I never want another hole in a roof at ground hole again. <laughs> Trust me. I learned the hard way. <laughs> yes. Never penetrate the roof. But I bet we're okay. Okay, the dental project is about 95% done. Good. We just got the electrician put the exhaust fans in and finished up the lighting. And that came out pretty good. That came out to be a pretty good project. It good. came out pretty good. Um, the senior kitchen, the demo is complete. We did pull a permit for the plumbing because I guess we got ratted on, so we had to go pull a permit, which was only $35 for the permit. So, but we do not need a permit for the remodel. Good. He checked on that because oh, everything's great. being torn out and being replaced. So there's no permit for the actual per, uh, the remodel. Nice. Um, the west side of Annex 1 is ready for stucco. We get that problem taken care of. Um, fairgrounds. I had a company come out give us a quote on redoing the fire suppression system. Remember how it's all, it's got, it's cut and yeah. they get it, it's been turned off. As far as we know, that system's been turned off for 12 years. And I don't know how you get away with turning off a fire suppression system for 12 years, but it's been turned off for 12 years. Tim's been there the longest and he said it's never been operational since he's been there. So they're going to go in, they're going to give us a bid on a dry system and a wet system. Because right now a dry system if it freezes in the, um, the arena, the pipes will break, and then you have water over the place, you know. But uh, they got heaters in there now. 
Um, so we're thinking maybe we can get away with a wet system in there. Glycol? Because it can't be water. It would have to be a, a wet system of glycol or a dry system. Right. The dry system, it would be just dry system. I mean, you know, you're familiar with that. Yeah. I mean, then you get the air compressor, and then it pressures up, and it gets the water. My, my first question was, do they have enough capacity to supply it? Is that why it was shut off? Does the reason why it was shut off, the reason, water the reason why it was shut off, because it froze. Oh. It froze years ago. Because if you go up in, if you go up, up in the second floor, they got the pipe coming from the system, and it tees off, and one feeds all above that area, above the, the, the second floor, and the other one feeds the arena. And they actually just cut that pipe off that feeds the arena and capped it off. Because that's where I guess that's where it froze, or it froze somewhere down the line. So they just got rid of the whole system, and they never turned it back on. It's it's been off since I've been here, you know. And Can it just be repaired then, and then turned back on? Yeah, they're going to try to do that. Yeah, um, I haven't got a bid back yet. They were here last week, and uh, they're going to go through the bid and see how about repairing. They're going to replace that one piece of pipe, and they had a couple questions where they had half-inch pipe feeding it some areas, which wasn't a good thing, I guess. I'm not that familiar with it. But um, he said it should be that much of a problem. So I'm not a plumber, but my recommendation, if it's been off for 12 years with no liquid in there, I would recommend before you pressurize that with anything, that any O-rings or gaskets that are anywhere in that system would probably need to be replaced. They, they, would, they would pressure it with air and test it. Yeah, they'd have to pressure test it, yeah. It, it's all, there's a, there's a way to do that. And, and it, was a, it was a dry system, so the water wasn't in it oh. until you have a fire. You know, one sprinkler, then it'll fill and then it'll work. So I'm, wait, I'm waiting on that bit now. Well, that should, then it should be good. It should be, should be pretty We'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed. It. It'll be good. Yeah. I know. yeah, I mean, that's just the one. Anyway, um, okay, the remodel. Now, you guys want to go with touchless fixtures for the toilets and faucets? I responded to your email or to that email. I don't so, know. Yeah. I think I read I your response. Your, I didn't respond. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, if that's your recommendation, it makes sense to me because then they actually shut themselves off. Right, right. I mean, that, I, I have no issues. I yeah, think that's my, a good, I think that's a good uh, I, my only question. My only question was with the touchless stuff is, is the maintenance and upkeep and that type of stuff much greater with the touchless systems rather than the, the valve systems? Because um, they're electronic, they're electronic, right? They're, well, that, that's the question I have for the commissioners. Do we want to go with hardwired or do you want to go with battery operated? I think you have Hardwire. more problems with battery. I would think you? so. Yeah, but either way, the, the battery ones are like 500 bucks a piece. The other ones are like 450. So if we go hardwired, we don't have to worry about the battery changing up batteries. Right. They take a C battery, two of them, yeah. but it's a constant thing. You'd have constant, to change constant, the batteries constant, out. Constant, yeah. I would think that hardwiring it would be the way to go. Okay. I mean, if you lose power, you lose right. power. Right. Sure. But, but when you have to remember to change batteries and all that stuff that's in there. That's a potential yeah. problem, so I yeah. would think not batteries if we could get them. I would, that's <laughs> my thought, too. Okay. But yeah. other, than, other than that, the maintenance on the, on the uh, motion, motion faucets and stuff is not, not any. No, because we have those at the combined courts, the new building. Yeah. yeah. Those are all, that's the way they are. We haven't had any problem with no them problem. yet. Yeah. You know, it's only been three years, but we haven't had any problems with them, so that's a pretty a good, good, yeah. good recommendation because then they're not just left on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, so yeah. somebody get in there and plug the sink and flood the, I mean, you know, yeah, there's all kinds of. Yeah, it's a potential problem. There's all which, kinds which is of. Which way to eliminate Yeah, that's, that, that'll work out pretty good that way. Yeah. Okay. Um, We're all in agreement on that. Okay, cool. About the hard wire. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Okay, um, question, Sheriff Roof, what are we going to do with that? I mean, that's something that needs to be done. I know we put it off because of the coronavirus thing. Um, That's a membrane roof, right? Yeah, and it's, it's, and it's, and it's time, huh? Yeah. Well, I've been on the roof a couple of times last week and this week working on can, units up can there. That, with, with some repairs to it, can we get through a year? With that, Mike, I mean, or give me a priority. What, what's the priority here? Is it this fairgrounds or is it the roof? What, what's my opinion, What's, it would be the roof. Well, yeah. It would be the roof. For your yeah, because we went up there one time, and um, we had a six-foot tear. 
because the material is just getting rotten. It just tears for no reason at all. And if we don't catch that tear and we get rain or snow, it's just going to pour into the building. Annex 3, we can deal with. Annex 3 roof's not that bad. And I think the only reason we want to do Annex 3 was because of the solar panels, you know. But Annex 3 can wait, but the roof needs to be done. We've got to get that roof done. It's in really bad shape. Then let's get it bid and get it done for so the going sheriff's to department we... would be more of a priority than this remodel. The fairgrounds? I say do both. I was going to say, why can't we do both? I mean, I think we've got. Yeah, we got. We got. We can do both those. Yeah, I think so too. And and I and I think Mike. I think we don't want to. Care, we, you don't want to go into winter with the roof that's on that building out there now, do you? Oh no. Uh -uh. Yeah. Okay. No. So. So that's just the process then of setting that back out to bid. Correct. Yeah. Correct. I mean, we've been trying to do the remodel for what half a year now. Oh yeah. 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 Let's let's finish what we start. Yeah. Same with the roofs. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that that was just we stopped that just because of the process of the uh, RFP. Mm -hmm. But the RFP is back. That's correct in that, right? On which on what that what on the fairgrounds? No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. fairgrounds. Bro. I moved. I'm sorry. I, I the RFP you. was we we got the bid, and then we had that debacle with the oh with, with the, the insulation RFP. problem and stuff. Right, yeah. right, yeah. But that's all been resolved. As far as I know, we just got to get everybody to rebid it again. We just have to go out to rebid. Right. Okay. And I've told them all that we, we, it's been put off because of the coronavirus, and I would contact them, let them know if we do rebid it this year. Yeah. Time-wise is another thing because they're all getting really busy. Whether you know when they can get to the roof, you know that's the thing. Well, why can't we rebid it? I mean, I, I think it's ready to be rebid. I think I yeah. think what you're saying is yeah. that that was all resolved, so those are ready to be rebid. Right. I would think so. The roof? The roof. Yeah. The roof is yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, the roof. I think we should rebid it. I do too. I, I don't think we can stand to go. We certainly can't stand to go another winter with, that, with what we've got. No. Is that what uh -huh. I'm understanding? Yeah, that roof's pretty bad shape. Then, then do we need to, at the same time, bid out the Sally Port repairs? No, the Sally Port's been bid. We got two bids. Okay. That's already been bid. But but those were two different ways of doing it. You you got quotes to do it one way and then another way. Right. There are two different two different ways. They quoted it two different ways. That Sally Port's on the courthouse. That's two. Yeah, two different deals. Yeah. Two different cats. Yeah. That's correct. Right. Items. Yeah. That's what I had. Priority down first. list. I would put that one lower because. What What is your priority list? Have you? Have For. You, with the changes, have you reestablished a priority list? Obviously. The roof seems like it's a priority right yeah, now. Yeah, roof priority, yeah. Okay. Definitely all, a priority. All these are on the table because when he did his budget last year, he presented them as priorities. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because there is money in the, in the budget for the roof, right? Correct. Right, for both roofs, but we did, like I say, Annex 3. I, I can wait another year in Annex 3, no problem. Well, I think right now the instructions are to bid them both together. So if we need to change that in the instructions, then we need to. No, I think it was separate bid. I think they were They two. were separate. Yeah, they were separate you bids. two separate. You think, you think the Annex 3 and the Sheriff's Department were in the same? No, they were separate. Yeah, they were, se they were separate bids. But yeah. the, we asked them to submit together, and, uh, if we, and they you're, did put right. different proposals, but they submitted them all together. You're, so you're right, to you're right Shaq. When we read the bids, we read them for both buildings. We read them for both buildings. You're so correct. we just need to change the RFP to include one or the other. Well, the sheriffs. Right, the just channel. the sheriff's office, right. Which that's, you can work with Shaq and get that scored away. That's just to remove one and leave the sheriff there and just send it out. you agree with that, Commissioner Taylor? I'm not, I'm not sure, because Annex 3, you said it, it, we were we were doing that. Was that based solely on the solar panels being put on there? No, it's, it needs to be redone. Yeah. Um, but it was like a priority when we're doing the solar panels, but now the solar panels aren't going to be done this year on that building, right? Yeah. It, is annex, I mean, that's been leaking, right? The Over here at the clerk and the assessor. Yeah. It, right. it, it leaked uh, not this last winter we just had, but the winter before when we had the heavy snow load, it yeah. leaked. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't bad leak, but I mean, the and, and they they all leak. Patches and I mean, through the jail's the worst. You know, we had yeah. probably 15 leaks this year or last year yeah. at the jail. 
Well, why don't right. we do them both? Like we did? I was going to say, why don't we bid them both? And uh, we've we've got we've allocated the monies for both of them. They were they were both allocated. You can bid them both because we can accept. Right, accept, reject, or deny. deny. Yeah. So. Okay. So send that but, back out just the way it was. Again, it's, it just depends on the language in the RFP. I say we just keep it as is. Yeah. Okay. And send, send it back happens. out as it was with yeah. the. So that everybody is now bidding on exactly the same things, and if they don't right. bid on the exact same things, they're out. They're I, I, I hope. I mean, you know. <laughs> and then put <laughs> in that REP, that's the, the yeah. RFP, that that's the first thing that new commissioners have to read so that they understand how stupid it is to put a flat roof in Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it does not take a genius to know with snow and ice and melt that you don't put flat roofs in Colorado. You do that in Phoenix, Arizona. Now, Larry Dawn. If you're the roof salesman, you say it makes perfect minute. sense. Wait a minute. Well, then why don't we put a pit strip on it? Well, we saying? don't have that every now and then. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm just saying future buildings. Well, the, the only thing about the flat roof is all the equipment you got on the roof. Yeah. I mean, the sheriff's yeah. office has uh, 36 units on the roof. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of yeah. nightmare. Because they have no other space on the interior. Yeah, right. so the you know, combined courts, all heat pumps above the ceiling tile, which I hate, but you don't have no roof penetrations then you don't have to worry about leaks. And that's all I've got. Okay. Any questions? Get, I, that, get those have, bids out as ASAP. One okay. other question for you then. Are you, I, I noticed the email that we read uh, as far as the charging station and the implementation of going forward with that. Um, that I don't now, think that was including Mike. I think that was that came from Justin. Okay, but I thought once it left, well, the Mike's here. It moved it's, to it's Mike. Yeah. It, it the, said May thirty first was the deadline, or for an extension, or right. the deadline. The deadline. I think. Yeah. I to think get the money, was, to get the, the the grant money to to get the grant no, money to right. go ahead and put it. Now that we've decided to put it over there as a tier two station. Right. Um, I mean, I think we were all on board to go ahead and get that one put in. Yep. Yeah. Where was this one going at? It has to fall within your... It's going to be right over there by the tower where we were going to put the quick charge, you know, where that uh, the tower foundation is there right to the west of the entrance. And you've got park, some kind of parking spaces there for the senior. senior. Right. Okay. Yeah. It'll right. be right close to the curb. Yeah, that's right okay. there next to your power pole and all that stuff. So oh, I remember, I remember that guy coming out. To the south yeah, side they, of the parking remember lot. Remember Commissioner Tell was bringing the girl on the motorcycle? <laughs> the, <how> they, <laughs> I do remember talking to that guy, and that's where we decided to put us right there on that outside yeah. curb. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, because they're between the church and the our property, there's just a spot that you could just trench over to now when i met with this guy he was gonna i he wanted to trench across the asphalt right there with a door that exits the senior kitchen i don't know if mm -hmm. you got the big transformer yeah and you got the, in the gate that goes up for the tower mm -hmm. they were going to put it right over there they, were, they wanted to trench across the asphalt and then I told the guy that we can go through the building right. and up over through the eaves, then come right straight down right there and put it right there without going through the asphalt. I think mm -hmm. it's I, I I think it's in your hands at that point in time. It's just whether we want to move forward with it. Oh, okay. When you guys put it together. That's that's really your deal, not. I think we just well, yes move forward. Before with now, it. Mike hasn't been involved. I don't think. I think just or well, Larry was the one Larry, mostly involved. So we've well, got it's, a, it should be in, in it's, Mike's it's a building. Well, it should be now, but we've got some communication catching up to do on. Yeah, this. Larry did call me to meet that guy because he was out there and he said he didn't know what the hell was going on. <laughs> and I said, well, why did he call you? No, anyway, but yeah, that, I did. I discussed it with that guy, and that's where we're going to put it. It'd be the easiest, so, quickest way to do it. Yep. And there's enough parking lot there that oh yeah there's uh, plenty there's, there's plenty, plenty of space well, for it and that'll be a good place the health department they can have some of their automobiles up there to do their do their charge if they need it to overnight so i, I would say let's put it back into mike's hands and let's move forward with it to get yeah. it done get this done before the 31st of may or get okay get it all right i did beat that guy and one i got one quick question good. one thing um when they did the fiber optic in annex three they come. They they saw cut it, the the asphalt over there, and they saw cut to our ice melt electrical ice melt stuff. Oh. Um, if they would have let me know that they really were going to do that, I could have told them that there was electrical wires in the asphalt. 
So now we have to get that patched before winter time. Who trenched that? Uh, Circle Z. Circle Zebra? And yeah. they're doing the install for farmers? Is that for Well, that's part of the fiber optics for our buildings. Yeah, was this? Because Kim called me on that, and she asked, do you know that they're cutting through our asphalt? I said, well, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. And then my guys, called, they came and told me the next morning that they had cut through the electrical for the ice melt. So is this the job that the fiber that they're doing, Circle Z, is doing it for farmers? Yes. Okay, so I thought they were boring, but they're... No, they, they're, they actually saw cut the asphalt, yeah. Jim, where's Jim, IT Jim? I think he's off the call. He's gone? I thought they were boring that. I didn't know. Well, I, I think I think we need to talk to Circle Z or farmers and say, hey. Yeah, we got to get You guys fixed. cut right through. You didn't yeah. check with anybody here no. on this, and you cut through our electric ice melt stuff, so we got some. There are going to be some repairs to yeah. that on you. Right. So was the asphalt already patched? No. Okay. No. I mean, they just cut a small section, but where they cut it, you can see where they cut two, yeah, well, I think, four wires. Sure. Yeah. You know, so. Which makes it ineffective. Well, yeah, now it's not working. Yeah. yeah. So, so you, you go get them to get that so rewired well, they, up, so you've got to. Yeah, and then we just patch it. Patch so they just have to cut a big enough area to patch it and then fix it. Yeah, I'm not sure how, it, if, if you've got to redo all the wire coming to it or just patch the wire, I don't know. I mean, it's one continuous loop, you know. Right. So, oh, I think once you patch it back yeah. together, you'll be fine. But. I think there are ways to do that. And while you're patching that one, patch this hole back here. <laughs> patch this hole back here. Actually, it's a Grand Canyon as you come into this parking lot. <laughs> I know exactly what he's talking about. The, the I hit that hole every time. <laughs> what hole? Hole big uh, enough need to some, put. Need some coal <laughs> patch back there. Get it from yeah. Rob. Rob will yeah. give it to you. Actually, use some hot patch now because the plants are open. <laughs> But it, if you're it patching one, big. you can patch. And it's right where you're trying to hit. You, can, <laughs> you have to hit it. You cannot avoid that hole. Oh, okay. We don't, we don't want to have holes in our parking lots. So we're going to get a hold. Why don't we get a hold of Jim on that patch for that unit, uh, Annex 3, where they cut the wires, or who do I? I think I, I would contact Circle Zebra. Yeah, they're, I the think ones, they're the ones that are doing the trenching and doing the install, aren't they? That's all you have to do is I don't know. I don't know. I don't know nothing about it. I mean, Jim told me they were doing it, you well, know. Who, who, tre who trenched it? I'm sure it was Circle Zebra. Okay. Which my guys said they were out there doing it. So I would call farmers first, and I would call Circle Zebra second, and I would tell farmers that your contractor has trenched through our electrical wires and our heated asphalt and concrete, and then and say they need to be repaired, and then contact Circle Zebra and say, you've got to repair, you got a repair to do on our, on okay. our wires that you cut. All right. All right. I will, I will talk to Jim and see. Um, but they did that work for us. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. No. Okay. Oh, oh for, for farmers. So it sounds like yeah. they did that work. Yeah, that's part of the fiber the optic for coming to this building right. and, you know. It's the, the new right. fiber optic they're installing. But, yeah. That's all I got. Any other questions? Let, let Jim at IT know that, too. I will. I'll go okay. talk to Jim right now. He knows yeah. about that, and he, he, may, okay. he may know what route, the way to route that. Right. And then how are, are we going to be discussing mm -hmm. about the fairgrounds, the final? Uh, are we good there the, as far as the remodel? Is, the uh, bids will the bids come are due Friday. Friday. This week or the bids this, are due this Friday. Friday. Okay. She yeah. just put out the addendum, which... Uh, uh, One posted this morning. Which were posted this morning. The only other thing on there was the... Uh, sewer, line. sewer line replacement, which we all responded. If it's there, just replace that out to the okay. past the clean outs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is what it sounded like. But uh, I did reach out to that plumber that he talked to. It sounds like there are deficiencies from the all, all the way to the tank, all the way to the tank. So, right. but we can add that as a change order also because it's just a matter of I don't know what is that three hundred feet or many more. No, feet. I don't know. To no idea. Idea. It doesn't right. make any difference, yeah. It's just but it doesn't matter. It's to do At it. least that way it's out of the building back to the to the exterior of the north side of that. Right. And I think that's on the addendum now. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. All right. Let's see. G, uh, GIS mapping. We have Doug Roth and Rachel Medea. Oh, it looks like and we also have uh, Mr. Dietrich. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good morning, all. Good morning. Good, good morning, gentlemen. How's the Mayor Pro Tem of Cortez, Colorado? Stressful. <laughs> <laughs> Which I expected. Congratulations. But <laughs> Thank good you. Good on you. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's it's good to be here. It's our second week back, and I think we we at least I feel that we're we're fully back up to speed. Our offices are open. The only reason we're asking people to call us to make appointments, we're willing to meet with folks. It's just because our offices are so small. As you walk in there, there's really nowhere to meet with anybody. So if, if anybody would like to meet with us, just give us a call, and we'll 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 come meet uh, in a in a common space. We're willing to do that. Um, and I do just want to mention that the that the the changeover that IT did is really pretty amazing. As far as when at home we're talking about download speeds, but when, when we're talking about our GIS server serving out all these maps, we're looking at upload speeds, how much we can feed out, and those speeds have increased from what I've seen about five times to what they were. So I mean. It's, it's a cost thing, but it's also how much bandwidth that we have dedicated to us, and it's it's pretty huge um, increase. So that's really positive. Um, you know, I feel that we're we're back to to our normal business. We're starting to trend down on working on the census activities, and yet we're still trying to find opportunities to get people to respond because we're still looking at response rates of. What about 55 or 60 percent? About 60 percent <clears throat> countywide. And one of those things was is we had about 1,200 brochures left. <clears throat> those were going to go out um, in Jim Reeser's um, Cortez Coffee Break newsletter, which didn't happen as this all happened. So those are going out in school lunches the last week of school for most of the schools. So those are going out to the school lunches that are being delivered to homes. Um, 720 to RE1, uh, 80 to, to RE4 Dolores, and RE6, a um, little over 200. Those are going out. And we also put up brochures and um, pamphlets in all the post offices and reached out particularly to the town of Dolores, their response rate was particularly low in all the areas. And if we're going to pinpoint one area, it's the Dolores area, and it's the town of Dolores that, that uh, we hope bumps up their response rate. A lot of the confusion is people are waiting for an invitation to respond. You don't need that. You just need the web address online and the address that you live at, and you can, you can respond and get that done. So. That's still our message. Um, um, Rachel? Oh, okay. um, and then I just want to update you about some of the other little projects we've got going on. Um, uh, we made an updated zoning map for the town of Dolores because they're looking at their land use code and I think potentially updating it. Uh, also, they recently passed that um, allowing marijuana shops within their city limits. So. Mm -hmm. They asked us to make them a map uh, with 500 and 1,000 foot buffers around their schools and daycares so they can figure out which properties um, fall out of that range so that they, you know, they can take an inventory of which ones can allow marijuana shops. Um, updated the fire risk maps for the planning department and uh, the emergency manager trying to get ready for the fire season this year. Um, I've also been working on updating the address map that I made for the Ute Mountain Ute Tribe. They um, gave me all their edits back, so I'm just kind of taking my time um, fixing those and going to give them a new map soon. And then with the, the downturn of our economy, a lot of people are talking about tourism and, and how to get tourism you know, back into our area. So I'm going to work with the chambers and hopefully create some um, tourism-based maps, you know, focused on OHV trails or hiking trails or biking trails, kind of showing people that we're there's a variety of, variety of things to do in our community that also aren't very expensive, you know, because I know everybody's worried about spending money, but, you know, there's a lot of things you can do in our area that are either free or inexpensive. So, yeah. So that's what I've got. And then we've got James with us. Yeah, and we brought James up here because at our next report here in a month, what, what I would like to do, what we're going to focus on right now is getting a, a 2020 roadmap uh, put together and, and brought to you and, and possibly at that time scheduled for, for a public hearing. 
Uh, we have a lot of stuff to review on this roadmap. We, we haven't um, uh, adopted the county roadmap since 2018. And, a norm, and that's a pretty straightforward process, but we all are also looking at adding some of the, some of the roads across public land, some of the historic roads, and, and noting that on the roadmap, as well as including some language that, that discusses um, um, right-of-way easements. So we we'll spent some time with Attorney Baxter on that. Um, so, so that's what we're gonna be looking at uh, bring it to you here in a in a month uh, and moving through that process that'd be good anything to add to that james uh yeah so i think as a part of that you know we've looked at um, you know from from the last assignment we had a while back we're looking at, at three potential things you know first of all the county road map that that uh doug was talking about but also you know as he mentioned identifying <laughs> potential historic routes that are on on uh, federal lands and then also uh, developing a priority for, e for each of those roads that are on public lands. So we have a sort of a system of, of uh, identifying which roads are critical roads, which ones, you know, maybe you can live with uh, without. And obviously there are a lot of roads up there that are uh, logging access and things like that that could potentially be uh, put into storage. Mm -hmm. So um, and I feel like we've done a pretty good job. We've taken a really good cut at that. Right now, it's sort of like having a big bowl of spaghetti, and it's all one noodle. And uh, with the help of Rachel, hopefully we can uh, separate those out so you have a bowl of spaghetti that's multiple noodles. <laughs> so, the different colored noodles. Yes, yes. And, and uh, you know, the prioritization system um, is all a part of that, and it was, um, making sure we keep some data going on that. Part of the reason I think um, this is you know, somewhat timely also is because uh, we are expecting probably some stimulus money coming into the federal systems. Uh, for example, I got a call from uh, Tom Rice yesterday and he's saying, hey, let's take a look at all the breakwater figures again, because they're aware that there may be some, some stimulus money coming and those are the type of projects that, that are often uh, targeted for that stimulus. So uh, roads and things like that, upgrades for roads, that could be a target also. So that's part of our, our process here also. So. Well, but that, the Forest Service Road, well, County Road, but they think it's theirs, but the, uh, the Dolores Norwood Road from, from where we quit paving to House Creek is horrible. Yeah. Coming apart. Yeah. 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 Coming apart. It's, <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. And it's probably it one is. of the most heavily used roads in the county, especially it, right now. What is it? What is it? Thirty years old? Thirty-five years old? When they when, when they built, built the dam? When they yeah, built they the, the lane, part yeah, of the project? It's, it's probably at least. So that's 30. been thirty-five yeah, going on four. Right at least thirty. Yeah. yeah. And 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 with no maintenance, no overlays, no. I mean nothing. But, I mean it's amazing it's lasted okay. as long as it has. Right yeah. No, and with the with the way that the people are recreating, you know, they're not going long distances. I rode a bike up the uh, Dunlap Hill, and um, there must have been 30 or 40 side by side bike. I mean, it was. It was I've never seen it that many. Busy. Uh, that, that busy. The other side. Yeah. Yeah. People are wanting outdoors. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, to kind of follow up on that uh, wanting outdoors, I did have a, a letter to send to the U.S. Forest Service regarding the reopening. I think you've all seen that yeah. letter. It's already sent, been sent, but we can send a, uh, a signed copy also. Good. All right. Okay. And I would mention with, uh, with James Dietrich here that um, we received a request for uh, support from Don Horam and, and Senator, um, I mean, Senator Corum and uh, Representative Catlin about the Twin Spruce project, the, the transfer, and uh, when, um, James took care of that, so yeah. appreciate that, James. And I got a response from uh, Mr. Caitlin, and uh, he said he will support us on that. Good. Good. In fact, he already said he sent the letters. Yeah. And while James is here, I'd also like to mention yesterday, during the governor's pre uh, press briefing, he said that he would be allowing the campgrounds and state parks to reopen so long as they have the consent of the hosting counties. Um, now, I haven't seen anything come down from CDPHE and if they have written hoops to jump through or anything, but it's my understanding that state parks will be represented next week. Is that correct, James? That's my understanding, yes. So um, I, I think it's fair to start the conversations on that. I don't know if they're gonna want something in writing, but 
I, I would think that uh, what it, since the governor stated that yesterday that um, that the commission could give the, express their thoughts today, and then the state parks guy will be here next week. Well, my first thought is, is how does the how does the governor figure it out? How does he figure? How does out? the Ohio governor figure out that restaurants should be open right now uh, on the outdoor patio, but the Colorado governor figure out that they can't be open? So how? I, do I don't know, but with this particular conversation, he said that for state campgrounds to reopen, he wanted consent from the local counties, and since we're but, the host but how county. Did, how did New Mexico figure out to open up the state campgrounds up last weekend? I mean, how do they do it? I guess my question is, is uh, how do these governors seem to know everything? <laughs> <laughs> it's just amazing. Yeah. Don't look to me for the answer. I, I, don't I have think, an answer I, for you. I think we only, we only have, what, two state parks in our area, Macus and, um, oh no, that's, we just talked about Dome, that. Uh, Lone Dome is in Dolores County. Well, Dolores we have those fishing so ponds up there. We just have one? No, well, you said the, the fishing Twin Spruce pond. fishing Twin Spruce. area and uh, Jackson. So we have two, those two. And actually, you know, Tot and, and Nair Glen up are Yeah, under, that's true. They're state, you know, that's right. I forgot about They're Tot. managed by the state. Well, yeah. I would support any, I would support it never closing them down. I think so, outdoor activity is yeah. part of really what we're supporting entirely because yeah. people are then outside um, easy to have social distance, easy to be in good air. I and mean, it just makes sense that that's the safest place to go out and unwind or whatever doing you're doing. Doing something for the mind and soul. Yeah. I think that's some of the messaging that, that we've all really missed is like telling people that their health and to, to get healthier is, is also what's going to help them through the, this, mm -hmm. these times. Yeah. And encouraging healthy activity and healthy eating. So yeah, and that, I, I think that we would encourage the outdoor recreation or camp or whatever. Well, sure. you, stay stay mm -hmm. at home in Montezuma County is not the same as stay at home in New York City. Yeah. Stay at home. You can do a lot of things at your home outside. Staying at home here in Montezuma County, there's a, it's all I've done is clean up my yard, my barn, my, I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a million things to do, and, but I'm still staying at home where people in a metropolitan area, when they tell them to stay home, they don't have anything to do. The poor, I, I pity those people. They don't have any <laughs> place to go or things to do. And but, mm -hmm. You know, for me, and back to my point about the governor, I, I, I really think that the governor is a genius because he has figured out that it's okay to buy as much booze as possible and stay at home, <laughs> but it's not okay to, to go to a gym and work out. So I, I think he's a genius that, that, that you should drink as much as possible, but you're not allowed to go to the gym. And smoke. Mm -hmm. Oh, and yeah, smoke and as smoke much marijuana, marijuana as you yeah. smoke, too. So I mean, yeah. I guess I'm very uh, hesitant to. <laughs> to, to your point, Commissioner Sukla, I would say that <laughs> if there is a severe respiratory virus going around, it would be essential that people fill their lungs with something other than oxygen. <coughs> to <prepare. laughs> oh, Shaq. Shaq. Shaq, you're out there, buddy. You are way out there. Uh, have your phone to D also? Well, you know, gentlemen, Commissioners, I think that if we want to um, formalize what you all's uh, sentiment is, maybe we, we do a motion saying we support the reopening of state parks, because that, that's all they need uh, is, is a consent from us, and then they figure out how to do it, but they can't do it without consent from the county. So it, it sounds like you all do support it, so perhaps um, we can just get a motion saying we support the opening of state parks. Yeah. And then that, that would go in the minutes and be formalized. So I would move that we uh, support the reopening of state parks within Montezuma County. Second. Motion is second to support the reopening of the state parks residing in the county of Montezuma. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Who has that? We don't have it yet. We don't have a. We don't have a, That's just a motion. We'll have to get that. We'll have to get that printed up somehow. Do they need that set, or do we just need to do that motion? And well, it's right I, I don't think CDPHE has pushed anything down about that yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, I, it yeah. seems to me we could just. So send what's that on your screen there is for the Forest Service. Yeah, that's Forest oh, Service. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, do we, need, John? Do we need a motion? Do, have we already approved this? This this Forest Service uh, letter. I uh, can't really read that. Let me see if. 
I can pull it up on my screen. Talk about opening all the Forest Service recreation. So, so what what haven't they opened up? They opened up McPhee. Mm -hmm. They've opened up That's most it. of the roads. I think they've opened them all up. Uh, Do you know what's lacking? Are there campgrounds? Only open? roads that may have uh, you know some kind of like uh, down timber or muddy conditions or something like that. Um, other than that, I think everything else is being I, opened up. I, I think they have, unless there's just a condition that the road washed out or something. No. Oh, so this I letter might be a mute point. Yeah, right? Is it? Is the letter a mute point? Is it? Actually, so, but I think it does give them support. And, I uh, okay. I think, it's I think Mr. Padilla requested it, didn't he? He did. Yeah. yeah oh, okay. Okay. okay yeah. then I would move that uh, the Board of Montezuma County Commissioners send to the United States Forest Service in care of Derek Padilla this letter stating that we support the opening of all federal forest lands and public lands at his disposal. Second. Motion and a second to support a letter, a letter uh, directed to the uh, district ranger Derek Padilla in support of opening up all um, Forest Service um, functions for the summer. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And do we have that letter? I think he laid that. You, you already signed it. Yeah. Oh. That one we wow. We're, we're good. <laughs> I handed I, it off. It's just lack of oxygen, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that one we handed off. Anything and we will, else? we will see you tonight for your first meeting, is that correct? Yeah, first full meeting. we all have the Zoom Are invite? Are you guys meeting in person tonight? No, it'll be a Zoom meeting. It'll be a Zoom meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a workshop, too. Right. That starts at 530. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Is there a instruction standard? Uh, that, that's what I was asking. I guess we do have the Zoom invite. Um, yeah, I can send you the attendee because I assume you'll need the attendee one instead of panel mm -hmm. right, invitation. So I can email that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Now that'd be kind of fun. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for the updates. Appreciate it. Look forward to that roadmap for yeah, the 2020. That, that, that sounds exciting. That's it a does. good project. Yeah. We yeah need it does sound really exciting. Okay, do a good job. We have the one, the only, Rick Torres for Veterans Service Director here in Montezuma County. The reigning, County. the defending, <laughs> heavyweight of Veterans Affairs. The Thank subject Rick matter Torres. today is uh, Memorial Day Proclamation. Yes, Commissioners, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to come down here early in uh, the month of May for the reading of the Memorial Day Proclamation. Uh, as we know, the Memorial Day uh, is a federal holiday. It is recognized on the last Monday each May. And so we always uh, take a break here out of our busy schedules, take a moment to honor all the men and women uh, that have died on active duty in the armed forces. So we'll take a moment to read it aloud and, and then I'll, I'll probably leave and while well, you guys sign it and then I'll pick it up later from, from Billy. Um, and is this the document that we put downstairs in the hallway? Yes, sir. We posted here at the county um, in two buildings, up in the annex and here in, the, in uh, this main building. Without further ado, by the Montezuma County Board of County Commissioners, a proclamation for Memorial Day. Whereas on Memorial Day, our nation pauses to remember the brave men and women in uniform and their sacrifice to protect the interests of our country and defend our freedoms, and whereas Montezuma County is blessed to be the home of more than 2,200 soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen who have shown courage and valor, often in the face of great danger, and whereas on this Memorial Day, Montezuma County citizens remember those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for this country and comfort the families and friends of those who lost a loved one, as we are forever indebted to those who have died in defense of our republic, and whereas we reflect upon the enormous contributions to our country of our fallen warriors, we also pay tribute to the next generation of Montezuma County citizens who have chosen to serve in the United States Armed Forces as they are committed to sustaining a legacy of unyielding patriotism, and whereas the citizens of Montezuma County must always stand united in remembrance of those whom have given so much so that we can live in freedom, prosperity, and enjoy our blessings. Therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Montezuma County, Colorado, 
that this 25th day of May 2020, we call the observance to the attention of all of our citizens. Thank you, commissioners, for signing the Memorial Day proclamation, and we will proudly display it in several places throughout the county. Good. And I will see you later this month yeah. <laughs> with my monthly Good. report. All right. Thank you. Rick. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. So we actually, if you just wait just a second here, um, we, we're, we're about two thirds of the way getting the sign for you. All righty. Yeah, thank Tim you. Purcell's all your life. All righty. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Thank you. And have, Thanks, a good, Rick. have a good day. Thanks, Rick. Rick. My pleasure. Okay, well, next Thank we you, I think we have Lori Johnson on. We got we need to sign the E911 grant agreement. The, it was a bid that was approved by the BOCC <laughs> on April 14th. So the logistics of this, Shaq, are we just are we sign uh, we, this? We just need to sign this and, and get it over to okay. uh, Ms. Johnson. And and, and uh, Lori, is there any kind of update well, or are we just? I think just the chairman. Not just the chair. Motion. Is there Net any, any update, Lori? Say we, that again, Lori. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear okay. you now, Lori. Let me, let me shut off my radio. Hold on just a minute. Okay, so um, apparently the CenturyLink is the one that's going to be doing those installations. However, because of COVID, um, they're behind, and they don't think that they're going to get to us in January of next year. It'll probably be later in the year. So all this contract does, the only thing different about this contract and the previous one that you signed is the, the due date, the date of the agreement in date. If you look up at the first page, check, up in the right hand corner, they extended the initial agreement expiration date to December of 2021. And then um, the fund expenditure date to, to March of 2022. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing different about the contract. Just change, changing the expiration dates and, and that, huh? Okay. Yeah, just so we, so we have longer to collect the money after, yeah. after the installation. Good. Okay. Right, any additional questions, commissioners? I don't think no. so. It's all, it's, this is just... I know you're going to be glad right to get those new radios, aren't you, in your recorder? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm anxious. Yeah. anxious for all of that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, let's sign now uh, so you, we'll get it to uh, – Shaq, we'll get it back to you. Yeah, I'll get it to – Okay, Kim. great. And I'll, I'll get it to the state. Yes, I'll get it to Kim uh, tomorrow morning, and then I'll take a, the hard copy over to you. All right. Thank, thank you, Lori. We appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Lori. Thank you, Lori. So okay, thank you. Before we go into the reports, there was an email blasting back and forth about burial. Has there been any? Can we have a discussion about that? The, mm -hmm. And there was a res. Shaq, is that your report? Yes, I was going to yeah. get that during. Okay, then let. let sorry, I, I stuck the horse in front of the carrot or whatever they want. Let's go to the county or the uh, county attorney report, John Baxter. Sorry, folks, about that. Jumping ahead of myself. <laughs> John, do you have anything? <laughs> Yeah, I took you off mute for my report. You put us on mute for your report? No, I took you off mute for my oh. report. <laughs> uh, so just a lot, of, a lot of Zoom meetings, you know, with uh, law enforcement, health department, other people planning um, for uh, all of our COVID-19 issues. Um, we've been especially busy. I think a lot of our county employees have been working extra time due to all these new challenges. Um, pretty much seven days a week trying to navigate our way through this. The, the courts still are operating almost exclusively via WebEx, which is similar to Zoom. Uh, it's just a way for them to keep the record or by phone appearances. Right now, the directive from the Supreme Court is that we will start in-person jury trials uh, in July. Um, I, I feel like I'm wasting my breath saying stuff like that because it seems like this is an ever-evolving situation and, and they always keep changing. But uh, right now, that's the directive, is that um, there'll be gatherings, jury, whatever, in July. Um, so uh, otherwise, um, business as usual. A lot of the stuff I was going to talk about, we've already talked about. One thing I want to bring back up, um, just in case it, it resurfaces, is the, our special improvement district, um, I, don't, I didn't want to necessarily waste uh, Keenan Lovett's time 
with it. Uh, th th there are some some things in that petition that I think Rob and and you all j just might want tweaked if you consider in the future uh, adopting that petition or doing a special improvement district. So if we get back there, um, th th there was just language such as uh, Montezuma County is going to maintain the structural integrity of the improvements it makes and will be forever maintained by Montezuma County. Th th those things, I think, lend to argument that we do have some extra burdens than we would otherwise have on county roads. So um, just we need to modify those um, or tweak them a little bit if we end up doing this. Um, so we'll, we'll see when that comes back up. Um, let me see what else I wanted to talk to you. Oh, you guys already did this, the state parks thing. Uh, I think that's it. Do you guys, do you guys have any specific questions? Oh, the, the funeral burial things. I mean, I, I don't know if we want to wait for Shaq to do that. We, we have had that come up in, in the past. We usually have just had the, the coroner pay it out of his budget. Um, checks right. We're supposed to have a special account that the coroner pays that out of his budget with. Uh, it, it, it seems uh, a little bit um, academic to me, but, but we should do it. We should set it up and, um, and pay it out of that. Uh, so just because that, that's what the law says. Um, so in the past, I, I remember this coming up once before, I think it was with the, the prior coroner and you just paid it. Um, can I ask you a question about that? Um, is, does this person have any next to kin? So, so I don't know the answers to that. My guess is is that we, we couldn't find anybody. Um, that that's usually when these situations come up is when they 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 pass without family next of kin, um, and they're somewhat estranged, and and therefore uh, we need to do something. And so I believe that. Do you know, this, do you know that the answer to that, Shaq? I do not know that. As a matter of fact, I have not confirmed that with the coroner. Um, because usually isn't that the first thing as you try to find out if there's any and, and, and I'm sure he, he, I'm going out on a limb here, but I think uh, he's always required by law to notify the next of kin, so. Right, and, and, and they would have then made the call on what to do with, to how, how to, um, whether we we're going to cremate the body, bury the body, or what. And so I believe the only reason he's at this point is because there was none. So this is yep. just creating a new line item in his budget for this certain circumstance per statute. That's all it is. Yeah. So I would like to make a suggestion. Um, this is how they do it in Alamosa County. They have uh, social services pay for it. Yeah. Uh, you know, this fits right up their bailiwick. But they have to be <coughs> registered in order. And, and, and so, trust me, social services for indigent, indigent people Social services does pay for a lot of cremations and they pay a certain amount for burials. But in order for social services to do that, the person who has deceased has to be registered and in the Medicaid program or in the social services department somehow. So they, has that been checked out? Not by me, it hasn't. Yeah. Well, no, that, that's something that needs to be checked out. That, that's George. your first call. The only, the only time that the coroner or the Montezuma County is held responsible for the disposition of, of, of a person that has died is when there is no next of kin, they have no ties to our Department of Social Services, they have no other contacts, no other resources, and nobody else to, uh, and, I, and I take the example of a, uh, the last one that I had that way was a, a gentleman that was camped outside of Pleasant View out in Opinion, Opinion Grove, and he passed away, and they had his ID, and, uh, but he had nothing, he was not, uh, associated with social services had no family contacts nobody knew where to go to hunt for anybody and uh, we did a 10-day search as best we could off addresses and they couldn't find anybody so then those are the ones that become the ward of Montezuma County and and only then do they become that and, that, and that's very rare I mean the, that this doesn't happen very often very not very often at all but, uh, well, you, you would have the most knowledge about it. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody yeah. in the room? Yeah. 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 And, and, and trust me, <laughs> the coroner more. and the mortuary here will check with social services to see if they're registered mm -hmm. within, on any type of Medicaid, you know, any type of services from the Department of Social Services. And, and then there is, there is money through social services to do that, to take care of them. And that's done a lot. But, uh, 
but these are for individuals that have no family, no ties to any type of uh, social services program, nothing, where they're just out there with nobody, no place to go, nobody to look to, nothing. And doesn't happen very, it's a, it's rarity, it's a rarity. Yeah. Okay, so, th so this would then set that account up to put in the yeah. corner's budget for yeah, for whoever. Yeah, for, for whomever that may happen to. And I think Shaq's amount that you suggested was about $2,100, $2, Shaq. So I think, that's a, I think that's a very reasonable amount. And, okay. and, and today, and, and in today's, in these indigents that have nobody, no place, nothing, uh, what they do is instead of, it says in the statute for burial, okay, the statute says burial in specific language. Yeah, instead of cremation. Yeah, but we, we have, uh, there's a standing, a standing agreement that, that they will be cremated and the, the cremated remains will be taken out to, to a, a certain place in the Cortez Cemetery and they will, those cremains will be buried there with a marker on it so that in the event that a family, somebody shows up 20 years later and says, you remember a Fred Thomas that died? Yeah, yeah, well, where is it? They're, they're, they, they, can always, they will always have a place and a recorded place where they'll so be. So will mm -hmm. be, okay. be there. Yeah. So, so we, I think we need to make a, is it, was it resolution, Shaq? What did you yeah, have? Yes, yeah, so uh, what I needed was a resolution to amend the budget to create a temporary general assistance program. And, and uh, it's just the standard, whereas Montezuma County adopted operating and capital budgets uh, for the general fund December 17th, 2019 uh, for the ensuing budget year 2020. And whereas Montezuma County after adoption of the 2020 budget has been confronted with burial expenses for the poor and where hey you know what Chuck? i would hold up on that word. i would put instead of burial expenses i would put disposition expenses sure let me uh, bring that up in word so when you put now. burial expenses there you that's very specific that's not where you put use disposition that leaves it open to either burial or cremation let me uh bring that up in Word and I'll change yeah. that. I think I Perfect. missed something. That'll do it. With disposition, disposition expenses for the poor, whereas uh, Colorado Revised Statute 3017-104 and 105 direct counties to create a temporary general assistance program uh, for those expenses. Boy, I left something off there. Uh, now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Montezuma County, Colorado, that the budget is submitted, approved, and adopted as the budget of Montezuma County, Colorado for the year 2020 be amended to $21,000 less on digitizing documents and instead that the same amount be placed uh, into a line item in the coroner's account to pay for the, and I'll change that to this. You said 21,000. I think you meant 2,100, didn't 2100. you? 2,100, correct. It's, okay. Yeah, it's written as 2,100. Okay. There you go. And I've got the date wrong too. What did I do here? We're close to April. You can. We can approve the shack, and you can clean it up. Yeah. You can sign exactly. it this so afternoon. So I would move that we uh, accept uh, resolution number seven, twenty twenty. A resolution amending the budget to create a temporary general assistance program. Second. Motion to second to approve resolution number 7 2020, a resolution amending the budget to create a temporary general uh, assistance program. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. That, that'll be Shaq will get it cleaned up. Shaq uh, or John, uh, you, have it, you don't have anything else, right? No. All right. Have a good day, John. Good to see you. Still here. I'm staying. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never know what uh, Commissioner Candelaria is going to say before <laughs> this deal's over. Uh, <laughs> I've still got uh, one more. You still what? I've still got more to present. 
Okay. Would it, um, all right. Is, is, is there a report from James? Uh, I think, he, I gave think he gave it. Okay. Because right. they were involved right. together. Well, well, we'll hang in here for you, Shaq. Thanks. Appreciate <laughs> it. Um, so uh, you brought up this morning the amount of money we've spent on COVID-19. And again, most of that has been to help the hospital and uh, to help our local businesses. Um, but uh, we do know that there's going to be cuts coming. Um, people may or may not be able to pay property taxes, especially businesses that are going under. And we have spent a certain amount of money. And so one thing I'd like to start with, um, no, each department has uh, travel budgets, except for the road department, they incorporate theirs into their operating expenses. Um, and since travel has basically been cut off for most of the year, um, these dues training and travel also includes money for training, so I don't recommend cutting at all. But my recommendation to the board would be that of the amount that's remaining in the travel budget, that we would uh, cut uh, the remaining amount by 50%, uh, which would be a cut of uh, $95,753.75. And that still allows for departments, if they have training, to do the necessary training uh, or whatever that may be online. But since most of the travel has been restricted at this point, uh, I'd like to uh, cut that budget by $95,000. What you said is half. 50%, half, correct. yeah. Which it makes sense. We're, yeah, we're it makes sense. Use. We're not, not, yeah. not going to happen this year, so. Well, it will it'll happen in December. But it's just by 50%. Correct. Yeah. I'm not cutting everything. Oh, yeah. So it's not yeah. cut. Because there's still going to be needs that come up. Yeah. Just right. cut the I mean, travel Let me tell you, if we're not that. traveling in December, we're in trouble. Your $95,000 isn't going to matter anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're correct <laughs> about that. <laughs> okay. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Commissioners okay. agree? I, I agree with that yeah, cut, Shaq. I'm, yep. I'm fine okay. with that. Okay. All right. I'll just make that. We don't need a budget amendment to spend less. So. <laughs> no, it's, you're just informing us of what you're looking at as far as the, the travel. And Correct. Travel we, we've spent uh, about 140, and I'm proposing that and that we start by cutting 95. Okay. What else you have? Um. Uh, re the money we did make available to Region Nine, we were last week able to help four more businesses with another thirty-five thousand dollars. Good. Good. And I think at that Zoom meeting, at that, uh, it was either the MBT meeting or the, I don't know. Any, uh, I've been on so many anyway. Zoom meetings. You're one of them, have to get more one specific. of them, um, th that is up to that 80 some thousand dollars, right? So it's still mm -hmm. we're, we're up to 75, so we got 25,000. So we still have businesses. a little bit more to spend to help our local businesses. And then also to uh, Colton. Um, Starts with a B. Colton. Colton. Anyway. Uh, from Dolores State Bank also said that they had now d uh, uh, distributed over six million dollars worth of uh, funding to our locals. So, and that was just one bank. So that that was another update. Not to was that was that from over. part of the CARE money that was about part stimulus. Of the, yeah, that was part of the that was CARES, CARES Act. Yeah, it wasn't their uh, money. It was got federal money. PPP or yeah. EDI yeah. or. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. EDIL. So. You know, one thing, I mean, you've already done it, but I, I really liked when, <coughs> before you pulled the trigger uh, on the four businesses that you would let us commissioners know. Uh, just no offense, but the three of us are businessmen, yeah. and we know more of these people. But, but didn't we, 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 we gave him. Well, we did, but yeah. still, we I thought that we would have really got the courtesy to at least well, know. You know, I, I would, yeah, I, I guess we, that may be something we should ask of, uh, of, uh, I'm Lori? sorry. Lori? Uh, I mean, Laura? Laura, yeah, if, if we, if, and I don't, you know, but I don't know, Larry, Dom, once we do that, I don't know if there's fiduciary responsibilities there that they have where they, their loan committee and who they loan their money to can be held. I, I think there is, and if I we haven't signed that document, then we can't. We yeah. don't know the. Yeah, I. Um, but, the, but the way that she gave the speech was, was she said it's your money, mm -hmm. and you get to pick who gets it. Am I oh. incorrect? Uh, I You're correct, Larry Dom. She did ask to have one contact person. Um, 
And so I think what, what we ended up doing was just assigning Shaq to be that contact person and giving him discretion on it. Right. Um, but, but I remember. Right. Well, yeah. I remember that too, but I just thought yeah. that... Have they been contacting you, uh, Shaq, on the on the Region home? 9 has. Region yes. 9 has, okay. Yes. All right, so they've been abiding just, by... Okay. All right. Just a... I know multi-millionaires that, and I know. I don't want. I don't want Ruth Chris Steakhouse getting twenty million dollars. Exactly. To, <laughs> when I know somebody <laughs> yeah. that came when somebody buy a down at the, the store. Right. Yeah, yeah, so I hear it. you. Right. Anyway, you'd like to make sure that the people that truly need it get it. Exactly. Yeah, I understand that. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. That concludes my report. Okay. Commissioner's report. I haven't had much. I haven't. I've kind of done a couple of Zoom meetings, and uh, that's basically all I'm waiting for. Most all of my, uh, I'm waiting on a Zoom meeting for re, uh, uh, Club 20 coming up the end of this month for our board of directors meeting. Waiting on AAA. We've got a, a, a board of directors meeting coming up in about a week with them, and so everything's really kind of slowed down for me. They're just all doing Zoom meetings, and and they're they're. We're not we're not having as much near as much interaction on most of the things I do with with any of them. So pretty quiet. And I I would also agree with that. Mine mine have slowed way down. Yeah, um, slowed way a down. significant decrease. Other than like I said, uh, the Zoom meeting um, uh, of the six million that Colton and, and Dolores State Bank have mm -hmm. have put out there. Uh, the MBT, the Montezuma Business Task Force, is still working um, with their tool chest to help the businesses get ready and get prepared uh, for reopening at, at uh, as things start opening up. They're working pretty diligently with that. Um, we talked about the charging station already, so really other than that, I don't, I don't have anything else either. Right, and I have a WIR uh, board meeting uh, on Wednesday, uh, which will last most of the day. But I would like to make a comment on what John said about the employees working seven days a week. Um, and I agree with that, they are. But I would also say, state that sometimes some of our employees um, are, are overthinking and overreacting. And we had an incident this. Uh, I want to remind our unelected officials that one of the main uh, um, things that county commissioners do is they control the purse. We are the ones that make the decisions uh, only us three, unless we give that authority to some else, we are the ones that make uh, the decision on where monies uh, go and where they don't go. And um, I won't get into more detail, but uh, there was a situation where people overreacted and um, they, they could have caused great harm, in my opinion, to this county. Mm -hmm. um, so I want those out there that are listening, if... If you overreact, uh, the commissioners here are the ones that make the decisions. Uh, uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, one other thing. I've got some correspondence here, and I think one part of it is, is quite important or could be quite important to the county. It's talking about the $150 billion in coronavirus relief funds uh, that is included in the CARE Act for local governments tribes, state, and local governments. And it gives a listing of the flexibility of uses and what all can be done with this money and I assume how to apply for it. So I think Shaq should have this and I don't know who, who but somebody, if they're, if they're giving uh, relief monies to us, then we should probably get in line for it. And then I also have another correspondence from uh, this Merchant McIntyre Associates. They, Free Federal Grants Consultation for Montezuma County, apparently a company that will help you file for these federal grants and help you get federal money for free. So if you will pass those along to the appropriate entities. Thank you, Shaq. Uh, I guess that, that brings us to public comment for the final item on the agenda before we adjourn. Okay. Gina Montoya D S S does pay for burial. What's that? At 1500 But the individual must be in our system. That's what uh, yeah, Commissioner Artel was saying. I think that's what I said. They have to be in the system. Yeah. 
So they work with the mortuaries mm -hmm. as need be. Yep. White horse man, oh man. We've got just one audience out there today. Yeah. So Dexter Gill asked what happened to the county reopen plan. And uh, I, we are still waiting for CDPHE. I've been in contact with them several times. I'm hoping to have some kind of comments on our plan or an approval to our plan shortly, but the ball is in their court still. I see we have a question from Ellen and MB about Reams Trucking, and I think they're here on a totally they are, different job. They're, they're, working, they're working on the airport, there you uh, go. the airport for the city of Cortez, right. approved, uh, I think in January, oh. they had a bid that uh, they approved down there for airport, I think taxiway, taxiway. Mm -hmm. um, work, and that's that would be where Reams is at. But you could definitely ask that question to the city council, uh, but I'm pretty sure that's where they're at. Yeah. Yeah, well, and and I, seen on the one, I seen one that was hooked to a, a gravel. Also a, a, a belly dump. Well, a, belt, well, a, a side, side, side dump. dump. Side yeah. Dump. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I drove right. In yeah. And, 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 you know, along with this letter that I just passed to Shack about some of these uh, COVID relief monies and CARES Act money, I saw that the Cortez Airport got $633,000 through uh, Corey Johnson was, uh, or Corey, excuse me, Corey Gardner was down at the airport with Russ Mockin and they are uh, figuring out a way to what they're gonna do with $633,000 to do airport improvements. So that came as part of this uh, COVID-19 CARES Relief Act, so. So I, I think to answer Alan's question, if I'm, I'm yeah. trying to go in chronological order here, but um, we, the county, Ellen, um, we, we're being very transparent. We're not using reams or fossil water for anything um, as far as I know, as far as no. the commissioners know. They no. are working down on the airport and they're working for the city of Cortez. Yeah, yeah we have never re-entered a, a renegotiation for that fossil water. It's never, reams. I think, has dropped that entirely. I don't think they offer it to anybody and I don't think there's any uh, Rob told me that that's not not an issue with, with them at all anymore. Um, you know, just on the airport, so because Alamosa County did, went ahead and made improvements where they could land a, a, a 70 mm -hmm. passenger jet, they have received multiple uh, proposals and they accepted SkyWest's uh, proposal for or airlines so you know we had some we had some city councilmen before said oh you can't build it they won't come Alamos County built it and they came and our 600 and some thousand I think is uh, chump changed what Alamosa County got yeah. because of what they had taken the past um, upgrades that they had yeah. done yeah I think this relief money just came like dropped out of the sky I don't think it came from a plan right. by the Cortez Airport say, hey, we need to expand our airport, we need to acquire a little bit of land, we need to extend our runway and, and do some things to en enhance our ability to get either freight airlines in here, something to enhance. No, I think this just kind of fell out of the sky mm -hmm. to them. So, so w when would we like, um, and I don't know if you have that already scheduled, but to go ahead and meet, start meeting with the city new council. With the new council. Well, they're not even meeting yet. <coughs> <coughs> well, we can, we can we have can a Zoom, Zoom meeting. meeting. We, we could have we, a Zoom we meeting. We have other meetings it, about us and, now. So. And in fact, before all this started, uh, I think I had uh, scheduled meetings with different boards after they were elected. So let me yeah. get that. Well, that. Because I think we should Maybe go we ahead can, and continue sure. that. It may be through Zoom. And to answer Ms. McHenry and Dexter Gill's question is where is our variance plan that we sent to the state? Uh, I th assume that it's still at the state. It's it still is. at the state. And, yeah. and if we get that, if that variance is granted, that 40% occupancy, we can have a face-to-face -face meeting with the city council. We can do it right Correct. in these chambers or we can do it in their chambers if we, if we get that. So it behooves us to stay on uh, our CDPHE people in the state to get an answer on whether they're going to grant us our variance to this, to this stay-at-home plan. And if, with that said, what is the, 
and I think I read it, but I can't remember. If we, if our uh, request is denied, when can our restaurants and our gyms open up? 15. So, well, no, so the governor still hasn't given an answer. His last. He said they're going to, yesterday he said they're going to start discussing it correct. at the end of this month. I, I heard they're shooting for Memorial Day, but yeah, there's, there's no distinct. Uh, the 25th. Well, I'll tell you what, Mesa County is serving them. They got theirs approved. I, theirs is 30% of occupancy. They've I got think, restaurants that are serving people. They're open. I tell I think you. ours will be approved because of the count that we have. I, we I think have the it And that's why I think it's important to get that 25 off of there and get the actual number of active cases we've got in Montezuma County should be about 10 or 12, not 25. It still shows theirs are higher than ours, though. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah, they're still they're higher, still, but they've got, they've got they have several, several tens of thousands of people more population. But, yeah. but you're right. No, our... But no, I, I don't think they can argue with that request. I don't think so they can I, argue I think it. it's just a matter of CDPHE now getting done if, and getting it to us. No, I so guess I guess the squeaky. by the end of this week. I'll tell you what, I'm going to keep calling that number Shaq gave me, that Susan whatever her name, Hump Hill, Ham Hill. Hump Jill Huntsaker Ryan. Oh, there it is. <laughs> You're close. <laughs> well, what, anything else for the good of the order, uh, commissioners or, or Shaq? I would say. No. I, um, Motion. Do we actually close it, or well, we're doing something totally different? Yeah. Yeah. I would say that yeah. we would yeah, close it. Yeah, that would be a different. Motion. I would move that we uh, adjourn. Okay. Second. Motion and a second to reconvene or adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.